we're good. Everything's um, fine. Yes, there we, we go. We went to go live instead of go live. I forgot I'd already hit that go live button, so I hit it again, and then I was like, why is it not doing the thing? Why did the window not go away? Oh, anyway. All right, let me just grab it. Very satisfying Look at that. Cake over the course of last night at 1 a.m. into this morning when I made the frosting before we jumped on this call, and I'm going to send a picture to the group chat really quick. Why is it showing Hyrule Road Trip still? Dang it, hold on. I changed this. I did. I did change it. I don't understand why it's doing that. Hold on, everybody. Can I edit this while it's That's a lot of on? sprinkles. <laughs> yeah, it's hiding the layer of a like a chocolate ganache, and then it's just a white cake underneath. Oh, nice. I was going to say, I see the implication of cake, but this is mostly just a bunch of sprinkles. <laughs> I know, but it's so satisfying to look at. Oh, yes. Hold on a minute. Sorry, guys. I My am plan confused. is to eat it with a spoon during this stream, at least partially. <laughs> Indigo and I are just going to have sprinkled discourse about a picture yeah. that no one in chat has like, seen. <laughs> I find it incredibly satisfying to have a uh, cake most that oh, is covered in sprinkles to the point where you cannot see um, the actual cake itself. But yes. then when you cut into it, you get like a nice layer of frosting. You get a little bit of crunch, crunch, crunch from, mm -hmm. the, from, the, from the jimmies. You get a little bit of the cake part. It's all working together. Also, I made it um, impulsively at one in the morning last night, so I do feel like this ah, is good, pretty good. good for the time frame and thought that went into it. <laughs> I don't have any reason to have a cake. Given the circumstances, kind of better than it could have possibly been. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I have a big old spoon, and I'm going to eat the cake with the spoon while I'm watching this. <laughs> yeah. Brad, if you can hear us in a pinch, you can just go into the thing and manually oh, edit it. A stream. It's okay. Fine. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Everyone calm down. <laughs> I am the most calm person here right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm having a great time. I've got an entire beer. like nine by nine cake to myself. Okay. All right. Last Good work, I team. I think when I hit the wrong go live, live button oh, again, it, it yeah. reset to my previous settings, and now wow. it should be. It should be. It should be the correct one. Everyone but it's refresh. Not showing it. <laughs> Ah, it's the last one. I wanted to have the cool thumbnail I made. <laughs> Cooking is an art. Baking is a science. Thoughts? Um, yeah, that seems pretty Bad. accurate. I'm worse at baking and I'm better at arts and sciences. So that seems to be <laughs> I don't understand. What I, I love that saying just because it pisses off food scientists so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for only that reason, I just imagine like every time Alton Brown sees that, he's like... Fucking, I put so much work into my craft, and everyone's like, oh, it's an art. It's, I just imagine him getting a headache from it. And Alton Brown's great. I, I love him, but I just, like, the the comedy of him being mad at a thing is is too much for, for me to, to resist. Okay. Cleo. <sighs> my rage. I ate incredibly healthy yesterday. And Tiny cat. Eat whole goddamn cake over the course of the next week. God eight. damn it. Does anyone hear Cleo meowing? I mean, I'm also meowing back at her, so that's probably the no. one you're hearing. But I hear you responding. Yeah, there's some tiny little, little cat meows off in the corner. It's good. I'm so angry. This is stupid. I, I changed the settings in the live thing, and it's not helping. All right, so whatever. Who watched the Met Gala last night? <laughs> I didn't realize it was the Met Gala until this morning when I saw a bunch of articles of like, the Met Gala, people's fashion, and I'm like, oh, cool, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I love All right. the pretty dresses. Oh, uh, can't Blue, take can you me. add the... Uh, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, there it yeah. is. There it is. Huh, how about that? All right, fantastic. Let me do one more last reload to see if it's decided to... I... Nope. I do love, though, for the Met Gala, the the intrinsic comedy of every time Anne Hathaway shows up, it's like, I'll rob you fuckers again. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Ocean's She had a look this year, too. All right. So, uncooperative stream settings aside, <laughs> I changed it. I don't know why it's not working. Whatever. Uh, let's see what We're doing a road trip to trip. kill Ganon. And any wolf stupid enough to get in my way. Red, what would you like this to be titled? <laughs> I would like to of be called Let's Deck Ganon in all caps, followed by Red Plays Breath of the Wild. Great. And I have a thumbnail, and I put the thumbnail in, and it's a really good. Whatever. I'll put it on the stream, bod. It's fine. No, I'll, I'll, I'll hold on. I'll, 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 
I'll, I'll make this work. I'll make this work. <laughs> I, I, it, it now says let's deck Ganon. I'm going to go to the community tab and get it? the thing. I did. Okay. I, I do this as your friend and co-worker. Thank you. And, oh, wait, hold on. The version that you have here is... It doesn't the have the text. Yeah. I'd send it your way, you but I'm a little bit busy road tripping to kill Ganon. Um, oh, okay. You could just put, I mean... Yeah. Look, I'll put the correct thumbnail on the VOD. It, yeah, because I put the thumbnail in this one and it didn't work. <laughs> if you just text it to me, I can, I can put it in. I. Uh... All right, everyone, calm down. <laughs> it's just let me mind fine. his own business real quick. A few minutes of the stream, we got time. It's fine. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Everything's cool. What are you for? <laughs> Hmm, the frosting on this cake is not properly set yet. I gotta wait for it to cool entirely. Tragic, unfortunate. And uh, <laughs> it doesn't stop me from eating a spoonful of it, but it's just very thin. Cool. You got it, boss. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Back to business. All this can I faithfully provide. So, hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the grand epic it. finale of the of the me fucking around playing Breath of the Wild. I've managed to avoid the technical difficulties so well so far. I believe it's only they fair. For you when you least expect them. Yeah, I guess this is what I get. So, um, today we are going to kill Ganon. We're, we're going to beat the game. But you guys have the ability to slow me down <laughs> because there's things we need to do. We need to make some food possibly collect some weapons. Actually, let's see how we're looking in the weapons department. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got plenty of room for better weapons. So we, we can go collect some weapons. Um, perhaps you can make me try the Master Trials again <laughs> because I hate them and you guys like that for some reason. Uh, well, so today we are fundraising uh, for the ACLU again because they're just kind of generally good. They do a lot of legal defense for people that certain chunks of the government like screwing over. Uh, today we are specifically fundraising mm -hmm. for their protection of the rights of trans people uh, because turns out a lot of the ways people are trying to screw them over are illegal. So the ACLU is here mm -hmm. to remind them of that. Um, what's going on? Sorry. All good? We was just scratching the couch. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, are the stream settings correct this time? Let's see. Oh! <gasps> It's correct. It's beautiful. Oh, second time. The things, the, Oops, hold on. The things that I do. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Let me off the We're in the okay. right playlist. We got subscriber only chat. We got slow mode. Oh, the, it's all it, the good it, it, stuff. Coordinated to a T. <laughs> we are masters of our domain. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's just see what rock salt does. We're just going to refill our bike real quick. I do want to see if we can use the Master Cycle in the uh, Astral Observatory. I think that would be extremely funny. My money's on no, but it did let me bike down the outside of Hyrule Castle last time, so anything is possible. So I think yeah. for first official incentive, so I'm just going to be like doing the prep work for now, but I am going to be heading towards Ganon as soon as I think I'm ready. So, whoops, uh, I think the first 1k thing... <laughs> is what do you guys think another crack at the ever infuriating master trials or something else <laughs> a 1k for master trials sounds sounds doable yeah so this would be we attempt it once and then as soon as i die we go back to <laughs> preparing to deck ganon i'm not going to yes. intentionally throw but the master trials are stupid and i will probably die anyway <laughs> I gotta say, floats your boat, Red. The, the fun like? thing, chat yeah. day and master trials. I of feel like course, that's a good one. Day. Day. Master trials. The funny thing to me about the master trials is that um, wh playing them alone is infuriating because I hate them and I have nobody to share this with. Playing them on stream is a mixed blessing because everybody gets to see how bullshit they are. But I also get the comments from people who were like, "Ugh, if you just hadn't fucked up twice." You would be fine. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, if I just had played absolutely perfectly for the entire time, everything would have worked out great. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's cool. We're raising for a good cause. Ooh, looking stormy. Ganon senses my approach. Alright, let's head up to... Um, What's up? So have you guys been following anything with the uh, writer strike? Ah, oh, I saw that it was I happening. heard that as of today, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's, it's officially happening. Um, the writer's guild, which is the writer's union, uh, is currently on strike, and as we are not scabs, uh, I believe everyone in the stream is pretty in support of that. Of uh, we yeah. have talked about <laughs> we've joked about uh, unionizing the heap in the fictional podcast really with difficulty. That is an attitude that applies to the real world much more <laughs> adamantly. Even better than a uh, fictional union is a real union. The real one. Yeah, I'm not in the writers' guild because I'm not a writer, um, but I do have friends who are. It is very important that everyone is paid fairly, and the advent of streaming services has caused. In enormous problems across a lot of different parts of the film and TV industry, but before, like TV writers specifically, you get a lot of shows that are doing fewer slates of episodes and people are getting paid unfairly because of that. There are uh, changes to the overall pay structure that are um, causing writers to fall vastly behind in a, being able to make a livable wage doing the same job that they've been doing for years. So mm. uh, it's important that this strike is happening so that the people who make your favorite pieces of entertainment happen can get paid fairly paid fade fairly paid fair <laughs> paid <laughs> fairly on, for their license? labor Where are you? Where are you? it's also um, um worth uh specifying and if i was about to steal the words out of your mouth and to go feel free to stop me but it's uh people often think that's like oh striking for better pay which like yes often yes but there are many very high paying industries out and around that also will from time to time go on strike for yes. benefits working conditions. So one mm -hmm. that's kind of brewing is there's a American Airlines pilot strike that might be happening um, because uh, the conditions for being an airline pilot can be very demanding. Uh, and even though they are paid very well, if conditions are bad, conditions are bad. So it's it's uh, pay and conditions oh, and benefits that are mm -hmm. things that uh, employees would very reasonably want to strike for. Um, yeah. So every for, you know every strike yeah. and every union is going to go on strike for different reasons depending on what their particular demands are at that time. Uh, the Writers Guild one, to my understanding, is largely about the in particular the pay structure and not mm -hmm. just like the amount, but like the way that writers get paid for working on. Uh, TV in particular, but movies as well, uh, currently, because with streaming, it has really, for lack of a better word, fucked up the way that writers used to get paid. <laughs> uh, and again, I'm not a writer, I'm not in the Writers Guild, I don't know the, too many of the specifics, but it's important that um, as we move into, uh, you know, away from cable TV and into this era of, like, everything is available on demand, shows get produced in different quantities and for different times, uh, that everyone is still able to make a living creating those shows, because otherwise we would have nothing to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone should be paid fairly for the creative work that they do um, in order for us to continue to entertain, to watch that entertainment. Um, all of this is to say, yeah, support the WGA and the writer's strike. <laughs> but also, yeah, the pilots... Um, Striking for safer working conditions is also very important. Support it. Uh, yeah. This is mainly not that we have uh, any boomers in uh, in chat, but yeah. um, oftentimes it's like, oh, what are they striking for? They get paid fine. It's like, well, oftentimes well, they don't. Uh, and also, there are there there yeah. Worker safety, access to benefits. These are all things that are important in addition to just raw, um, uh, you know, monetary compensation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, every industry is a little bit different. And the people who know best what they need from that industry are the people who work in it and currently don't get those things. So when they say, hey, we're going to go on strike because we are feeling unsafe or because we are feeling compensated incorrectly, I, I'm always inclined to listen to the union who is on strike over oh, literally yeah. anything else. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of yeah. trust that these people are not disrupting their access yeah. to their livelihood for shits and gigs. They probably yeah. have a good reason. <laughs> Exactly. You know, the writers want to be writing, but they don't want to be writing and, you know, taken advantage of. Yeah, exactly. So they're on strike. Completely reasonable step, and it's why unions are so effective um, and important. Yes, good. Okay, cool. I had a fright when I dropped the Hyrule shield, but we're good. High lane shield. But I don't, I especially just want to say this, because, like, it's going to probably affect stuff like the late night 
uh, shows and like SNL and that kind of oh, live yeah. TV first before it starts yeah. to get to pre-produced stuff. But don't go just because your favorite show might be on a little bit of a break while they're handle while the writer strike is happening. We do not cross the picket line. <laughs> We support them regardless of how long it takes for a show to get made. Um, this is a problem that frequently comes up with entertainment industry strikes. Is people will be like, well, my favorite TV show or my favorite movie is like now delayed a couple extra weeks or something because of the strike. Uh, and then they start to oppose it. No, 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 no. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, if the showrunners think that they can get crafty, hire some mm -hmm. scabs to write some stuff. And then it's like, why did the show start becoming fucking terrible? Because the yeah. writing went through the toilet. Because they hired scabs. Yep. Every time. <laughs> Apparently, Heroes went that way, where it was it was affected by the writing strike, and they just got a whole new team in, and they were like, uh, let's do a bunch of this mm -hmm. stuff. And then everyone's like, this is bad now. I mean, as I understand it, almost every time that there's been a point in television history where all the shows got bad for some reason, it's because the writers were going on strike, and the showrunners were trying to get around it. Mm-hmm. So hopefully... And I say that with very little faith that the industry has learned from the mistakes of the past and will <laughs> enter into good faith negotiations and give the writers what they deserve. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if all of your shows start getting bad for a little bit, please do not panic. Yeah. We want equity for creators. Come on, people. Now we'll see which of the late night hosts actually has the improv chops. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, indeed. Balance fucked. Nah, nah, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of them come from stand up, so it is really fun to see, like. Yeah, Colbert was a second city guy. Mm. Colbert was a second city guy. Like, he's probably fine because that's that's his bread and butter, but, like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it? Um, oh, God. I know Stewart was a stand up guy, but he's not really on anymore. Uh... <laughs> was Fallon stand up or was he, like, a second city guy? Um. City. Um, does I figure Oliver is going to be fine City because did. his show would just go on hiatus in solidarity with the writers and all that. <laughs> I'm mm. like, I can see that the last week tonight just doesn't happen for a couple weeks. <laughs> doing as much cooking. It only gives thing. people more time to reach 1k and force me to try the master trials before decking Ganon. <laughs> if, you've never, if you've never seen a Second City show, you gotta go. Those are real fun. Yeah, they're pretty fun, yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Sorry. I've, watched, I've been to a lot more improv shows in the last couple months because my uh, boyfriend did a lot of improv in the past and his brother currently does improv and so I've been to more improv in the last like couple months than <laughs> ever before in my life. That's fun, you know, it's a good time. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, I guess we can always do more. Ooh. There's a lot of Crusader Kings stuff going on in the chat right now. Crusader Kings? Um, mm. We're not going to play Crusader Kings on this channel, but on Thursday, I will be joining our friend Joxy Whipper. <gasps> On his Ooh. Twitch channel, we're going to be doing a Venice run of either CK or EU4, I don't know which. The goal is that uh, we're going to collect every island. Every island on the map that exists will become the property of Venice by the end of the stream. <laughs> that is our meme paint the map run, where we're not actually painting the map, we don't want a land empire, we just want islands. <laughs> so if you want the, the fabled OSP, you know... Paradox game stream, Jacques the Whipper Twitch channel this Thursday and the following Thursdays mm -hmm. until we finish it. So there it is. Yeah. You guys uh, read any good books lately? Uh, I feel like the answer is yes. Oh, yes, actually. Um, along with starting the audiobook of Two Towers, narrated by Andy Circus, of course. Uh, I've also been. Uh, reading through The Illusion of Life, the um, animation book by a couple mm -hmm. like classic Disney animators, because um, we got an email from somebody who's interested in becoming an animator uh, and was asking for advice about you know what what they should do art wise, what they should practice, uh, stuff like that. And to do my due diligence, I did a little research before I responded. 
Um, and I found that The Illusion of Life is like the book, like the, the book that codified a lot of the modern concepts of animation because Toonie animation is a pretty new art, all things considered. Like, it's existed for about 100 years, as it does now. Like, flipbooks existed before that, but, you know, 2D animation as we understand it is quite recent because it had to come after the advent of film. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of the early animation, you know, pre-Disney, stuff like, you know, Betty Boop and all that jazz, was highly experimental with no real guidebook for how things should go. Um, so basically these guys would, like, try things and be like, all right, for some reason this looks a lot better than this other thing we tried. Oh, hold on. Citizens in distress. Um... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so basically, um, oh, I, keep, I keep forgetting I've already rescued these people. All right, uh, yada, yada, yada. So The Illusion of Life is a book that basically were a couple animators essentially being like, all right, this is what we figured out. Like, this is what we think works and why. Um, and so they codify these, like, concepts of what makes good animation. So you have, like, you know, squash and stretch and, um timing and appeal and all that jazz and it's just really interesting uh it is also very like <laughs> i don't know apologetic about disney as a character like as a person um <laughs> oh that walt <laughs> yeah well this was written after his death i'm almost certain um so wait is this even close to the right way oh yeah this actually does work um so it, it's kind of like It'd be like, yeah, Walt, you know, he animated, but, like, he was really better at, like, critiquing our animations and, like, making them better. Like, he, he, he didn't really catch up to the animation after a while, but, like, he, man, he was so good at identifying what was wrong with our stuff, and I'm like, oh, that sounds really fun. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> anyway, it's really interesting. Uh, so if yeah. you are interested in animation, I think... Like, I mean, if you're interested in animation, you've probably already heard of and read this book. I feel like it's probably assigned in every animation class. I've just never taken an animation class, so I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. All right, how are we looking on the... Yeah. Oh, we're... we're I've been reading up on um, 500. The Mountain and the Sea uh, by Ray Naylor. It's a... Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm about halfway through it. I've been working on it for a minute, but it's a... Uh, kind of a speculative science fiction book about the near future uh, and a potentially a uh, new race of super intelligent octopuses that are ex in existence. Nice. I just hit the point in the book <laughs> where, because they've kind of been doing like hearsay and near misses and just like rumors of something in the water outside of this one area. Oh God, uh, that's my favorite that kind of horror is, storytelling. It's, it's very Michael Crichton and I absolutely adore it. That's <laughs> why so many of my favorite books are this particular genre, but uh, just like something's in the water, it's, smarter than a fish like what's going on they brought in the scientist who wrote a book about how octopi could actually be secretly super smart guys i promise um and uh i just have the point in the book where they have explicitly stated that it was an octopus for the first time in one of the witnesses memories and the way he described it is it was like the octopus was standing like a man with his tentacles forming two feet and i was like oh my god it's incredible this is the best book i've ever read <laughs> wow that just spoils the the horror doesn't it <laughs> It was standing a like bit, a was, man. <laughs> I'm only halfway through, so I imagine it will get somewhat more. They did use a sharpened tool to murder a man, so I think the horror will ramp up a little bit in the second half. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty into it so far. It's a, good, it's a relatively new release, I think, but nice, solid book. All right, but like yes, Octo Dad IRL. <laughs> look, octopus murdering somebody with a sharpened tool—that's pretty cool. Octopus standing like a man. <laughs> It's the first time that they've described the octopus like not entirely underwater, which is I think why the kind of dissonance in the description came up. Came up. Um, and I am, chased. you know, bastardizing the uh, description a little bit. It's much more poetic in the writing, but um, yeah, the mental image I have of that is just like Octo Man <laughs> standing with his little shell knife looming in the background. <laughs> Mom says it's my turn on the Xbox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's got it does a lot of really cool like. Um, why is it playing the Lionel music? The book's doing a lot of really cool uh, speculation about like the development of language in non-human species and explaining like the different factors that go into it and why it's such a complex thing and the signs and markers that like a scientist would need to indicate that there is a culture forming among uh, 
the octopi in this case, but any species really. And I think it's like a really interesting uh, kind of ecological perspective to take. And um, I, I'm a massive Michael Crichton fan. This is right up my alley. I'm absolutely, I'm so so into this. It's just. <laughs> Um, but I'm trying to work through my backlog of books. Because when we went to Iceland, I picked up some crime fiction because that felt right. And then uh, I've been sitting on a Michael Crichton like spy thriller for a minute that I haven't gotten to. But once, once this book's done, there's some reading to be done. I don't get to read a lot. <laughs> I've watched so many movies. <laughs> I gotta watch Space Jam tonight. Which one? The original or Space original? Jam. Or the original, yeah. Ah. The uh, movie structure scores votes every month on a movie to be reviewed by me in written form, and this month they chose this one. Ow. Uh, the book is called The Mountain and the Sea. It's like a blue cover with little, like, African sea beads on the side of it. Cool. Yeah. What's my favorite book? Um, that's tough. I tend to go back and forth on it. Um, like prefer authors to books. I was on Dominic Noble's podcast, which is called Reginald's Pod, uh, talking about Dragon Teeth, and that's if not my favorite, it's up there for me. That's a it's a Michael Crichton novel that was actually published after his death. It was a, a so he was working on it, so it's a little bit less polished than some of his uh, earlier stuff. But um, it, it's about these two. It's this like ride along kid historical fiction and uh, paleontology oh. western, and it it's somehow equal parts about like early paleontology uh, in the guys, American West. When did we hit 1400? Uh, oh. Oh, when did that happen? Yeah, when did that happen? Did somebody donate like one? Uh, yeah, we got an anonymous 1000. Oh there it is. my God. <laughs> All right. Thank you so wow. much. All right. Let's just. Thank you. Thank fucking, you. Let's just warp. I'm not going through the Thank you very words. much. Ha! Yeah. Um. Well, rides off to the woods. Uh, Dragon Teeth. I'm never going to stop singing the gospel of this book. I like it so much, but it's uh, these two uh, paleontologists that have this like very like New England academic rivalry go out west and are going to like crazy like spy versus spy lengths to sabotage each other and they are real historical figures that have been put into this historical fiction novel with this like kind of ride along character who at some point it, like and this is where the kind of unpolishedness of this book comes in at some point uh, the kind of ride along college student. Uh, get separated from the paleontologist that he's with, and then he's just sort of in Deadwood for a while, and then it's just a book about Deadwood for a while <laughs> until he gets back. But the whole thing is about these bones he's trying to protect, these these, these fossils of, I want to say, uh, at the time it was a uh, undiscovered, but brontosaurus. But um, yeah, it's extremely cool. Uh, I highly recommend it. And if you want to hear me talk about it more, you can check out Dominic Noble's podcast called Reginald's Pod, available on all fine audio platforms and on his Patreon. Do you guys have a favorite book? Um, it is a tough one. Scroll. I'm currently looking off uh, at my giant mm. stack of um, of workbooks, for lack of a better word. Um, <laughs> the Iliad slaps. Uh, it's pretty good. I. It's all right. The oh. Iliad slaps is such a <laughs> casual way to refer to one of the epics uh, of human history. <laughs> Um, the Divine Comedy, I don't <laughs> know if I could say that I, like, enjoy reading it. It is, it is perfect in its construction. Like, it is, it is flawlessly mm -hmm. constructed. What Dante set out to do, he completely accomplished. But it, it, it's a little tricky to actually sit down and read the thing, um, yeah. which is, the only thing that that really goes against it is like it's perfect but i am not therefore i cannot achieve maximum <laughs> <laughs> joy uh out of it um but uh, all right yeah yeah yeah. master trials cool awesome all right that's tricky I feel like, and this is, and maybe this is just the uh, burnt out ADHD former gifted kid in me, but I've been trying to get back into reading recently because I, for a very long time, only read books if they were assigned to me in college. And while I liked a lot of what I read in college because I tried to only take classes I was interested in, um, it doesn't give you the best breadth of uh, current literature. And so I've been really trying to jump back into picking up more recent books, that the, or at least books are more recent to me that I haven't read that maybe aren't like 
not like your Frankensteins and your Draculas, but you're like Iron Widows, you know? <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still great in their own right, but maybe like a more modern book or maybe just not considered like classic fiction in that same way. Um, and I've been really enjoying that a lot. Uh... Which is not to shade any uh, Dracula or Frankenstein, although I think of those two Draculas, the one I would probably reread again if you, you know, gun to my head. But, Dracula uh, fucking slaps. It's also about to restart Dracula, Dracula Daily, so uh, if you want to follow the adventures of everyone's best friend, Jonathan Harker, uh, now is the time. All right. This time Honestly, what a brilliant fight. concept for how to tell a story is yeah. to do it, like, yeah. chronologically. Because then you can just, yeah, you can just reset it, like, every year or so, and it's like, ta-da, and it just becomes a communal event it's genius it's absolutely genius i gotta say it works better for dracula than it does for moby dick which i oh, signed yeah. up for whale weekly and uh boy that book's a slog <laughs> it's just it... like every every week or so i get another email of incorrect whale facts <laughs> <laughs> it really is remarkable how much like the concept of pacing has <laughs> shown up and become a thing that now exists in literature since, like, the start of the 1900s, yeah. or, like, really the middle of the 1900s. Because, um, like, you know, I, I'm i really showing my ass here with how much, like, 1800s literature I haven't read. But there are some mm -hmm. that are, you know, paced in a more snappy way. Like, I'd imagine Dracula actually kind of, like, has a bit of a, a cadence to it, whereas some of the other books, like, you know, in the very comparison, like Frankenstein, like, I don't... I don't know how that one's paced in comparison, but I can't imagine it it, it flows quickly uh, off the page. I can, yeah, I can appreciate Frankenstein as like this marked piece of science fiction, uh, but it doesn't mean I want to reread it. It's, <laughs> it does a lot of jumping around in time and storytelling perspective that is interesting in its own right, but maybe like not as smooth a reading experience as Dracula still remains. Yeah. I, I feel like it's it's probably like heretical of me to say, but like most of the classic books could probably lose like a third or half of their runtime and be a lot better afterwards. <laughs> like I I love the Iliad. You could you could easily like cut that thing down by like a third and not lose much <laughs> from the reading experience, unless you really know what you're looking for and you really care to read the whole thing with all the digressions and stuff. You, the core story is 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 pretty straightforward, mm. um, but yeah. like you know, Lord of the Rings, like you can't cut that thing down. It's like everything that's in there is is, well, is in that's, service to the I broader. Mean... Well, well, no, 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 because... The Marillion exists for a reason. <laughs> yeah, because, no, no, like, I... you, can, you can tell the story of The Lord of the Rings, you know, as a film, and you can get through the whole thing in 12 hours watching the extended Second. editions, of course, but, like, the experience of the book is, like, from everything that everyone has told me, and even the, you know, from I've, I've read The Hobbit, um, I, I, I got to Lord of the Rings a little late. I, I want to read it eventually, but I haven't. Um, that it is, like, it, it is such a, a pure and oh, complete wow. experience that if you... If you start chopping it up it just it, it breaks it doesn't work the same way that tolkien would intend it to whereas some stories it's like oh you can you can cut some stuff out and not really lose much am i off base well the thing is you're not wrong but listening through it um boy howdy uh there are a lot of points where uh it could have been a little bit truncated let's just say hey hands off Mr. Steely. Okay. This is also like, coming from, and not to put you on blast, Blue, but in the past we've had conversations where you're like, no book should be more than like 100 pages. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I think, no, any book that is more than 100 pages needs to earn the runtime, and a lot don't. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the, here's the thing with Lord of the Rings. Um, there are a lot of parts in the movie that are taken from the books verbatim. And that's always cool moment where it's like, oh, that's the bit that, yeah, that's just literally how the line goes. And then you, the scene just keeps going. Because Frodo keeps asking follow-up questions, and Gandalf keeps answering them. So it's like, like when he wakes up in Rivendell, and Gandalf's like, oh, it's just 10 o'clock in the morning. Frodo has so many fucking questions about the Nazgul, and the logistics of how they have horses, and what's up with the horses, and like, how can the horses stand them? Because like, y you know, they're scary and shit. And Gandalf will not stop answering his fucking questions. So they just keep going. And that didn't need to be in the book. <laughs> It's cool that it Fair is. Enough. It's very relaxing, but like every scene could be cut down by like two thirds and function the same. All right, let's just be really careful. I can't see shit. 
and my bomb is now flying precariously through the air. Spectacular. I feel like I was supposed to pick up some arrows in the last room, and I didn't. So, sorry about that, guys. I'm not throwing for content. I'm just not good at the Master Trials, because they suck. <laughs> I will take no further criticism of my correct viewpoints on literature. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I know that I, I'm coming in with a real strong opinion here. <laughs> Props to you, you've been consistent with it the entire time that I've known you, so... <laughs> this is true. No one can accuse you of not being dedicated to this opinion. Uh, do I have to agree with you? No. But it, do you <laughs> certainly Do I can. agree with you? Also, no. <laughs> I think there are many more instances where being over 100 pages is very well just justified. I, I, I think 100 is probably way too harsh of me. I, I can probably go for, like, any book over 300 pages no, no, needs no, to earn its runtime. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, under 100 is, like, that's that's tight. That is a tight narrative. That's you really do not have a lot of room to play in that. Um, oops. God, why am I like this? <laughs> it's because like, I just read slow and I want books to be short so that I can read them in a reasonable amount of time. Well, let's see, Maybe. One of my favorite books. Okay. Oh, you know, The Iliad, <laughs> The Divine Comedy. How long do I think a book should be? Oh, you know, pamphlet length. <laughs> I suppose I will, you would know. I'll give you this clue. I see, I get much more where you're coming from on this, having now started with movies, uh, watching them for my job and not for fun. I'm like, oh, if these were all shorter, my life would be so much easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it does, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean I want them all to be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I understand where where that might the godfather from. a lot of guys talking in a room i mean honestly it's like the what's the <laughs> two movies instead of three and it would be fine but i don't think that's a hot take i think that's just didn't the they remake the third one like last they year made, they yeah. made like a tv series based on the godfather i have not watched it uh that i don't know if it was a remake of the third necessarily i think it was just adapting like the entire story more but like into you know tv series length i slept through the middle third of the godfather so i was never entirely sure what the plot was that's oh yeah, 2020. The New version of The Godfather Part 3. Oh. Wild. Was it just Part 3? Yeah, they just redid Part 3. I think they like oh. recut it, used different footage. Wow. Monkey. Fascinating. Um, opinion. Do I, uh, what's this question? Do I ever find it painful reading a movie stri script? Um, I don't read a lot of mo movie scripts these days. I tend to just watch the movie. Um, very much not a writer. Uh, I appreciate and love the art of screenwriting, but it's just not something that I've ever had a particularly vested interest in. I've read a few scripts in my time in screenplays um, when I was in college and I used to work more on set. You know, you read the script that is presented to you, but not every position receives a script every time if you're just like PAing around. So um, when they're presented to me, I like them. I understand how to parse them and what the like language of screenwriting is, but I just, if I'm gonna read something, I usually go for a, a book. I mean, scripts are not designed to be read. Like, there's a reason they're not as fun. Yeah. No, it, I, it's completely <laughs> understandable why people would want to read them, because it is kind of fun to see, like, the nuts and bolts of how a filmmaker thought about it. The one script I would really like to read that I have not gotten around to, or the one screenplay, I should say, is Everything Everywhere All at Once, because I just want to know, like... It's not even that I think the story would be better in that format. I just need to know, like, how do you write that story down and get that movie like yeah. to me that feels like a movie that could only be directed by the people who wrote it because it's just like that's you have to have that in your head before it even gets on set oh and i don't know if you can I, i'm desperate to understand like how they tried to communicate that via writing so that's probably like occasionally yeah. there's an exception like that where i will seek out a screenplay but it's uh I, few and far between i like that all screenplays use that same silly typewriter font even still <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like someone shows up with Times New Roman and the, new, the lead is like, no, no, <laughs> Courier, get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> get that weak shit off my set. Get that weak shit off my set. Oh god! I do. Oh, fuck! Shakyu's a scab. <laughs> <laughs> Writing in a sans serif font. Where'd the blue one go? Yeah. Plays are a different story um, for me because I don't ever have to worry about having to make one of those. And so... <laughs> And I used to do a lot of tech theater, so again, like I understand the general idea of how to parse them, but I do like enjoy reading a play every now and then. Um... Favorite Shakespeare play? Mine's The Tempest. 
Ooh, I do really. Prospero is such a little weasel. What? <laughs> That's what makes great. him fun. No, exactly. He's great. He's just a little rascally guy. Just a little dude. <laughs> oh shit. Um, the Scottish play. It's very basic, but it is very much my favorite. Yeah. Hello. I have a soft spot for Coriolanus, not because I think it's particularly good, because I had to write a paper on it in college, all about the character Volumnia, who was the mm, crone right. archetype. Oh yeah. And I love I her dearly. Having strong opinions about favorite. crones for a while. <laughs> Yeah. She fucking rocks. She's the best character in that play. It's otherwise incredibly boring, but man, she's cool. It's one of the, like, Roman ones, I think. <laughs> oh, I die a stinker. I need to actually read um, Mark Antony and Cleopatra at some point. Sina and I went to go see a performance of Othello from the National Theater um, mm. that was... Uh, uh, broadcast. We did not go to the National Theater. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was not part of my European gallivanting trip. Um, and I was like, oh, wait, shit, this is, like, I never read or seen Othello before. I'm like, yo, this is good. Like, you hadn't even watched Iago's a bitch. <laughs> I hate this guy. Um, and oh, I was like, man. there's a lot of really, you know, important Shakespeare yeah. plays that I actually have not seen or read before. And I was kind of doing a mental note that of, like... from Aladdin is just such a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are you calling a... What's Othello? I'm calling you the parrot from Aladdin, uh -huh. from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I think. Yeah. God, Iago is the worst, and I like it, because a lot of Shakespeare villains kind of like turn out to the audience and be like, you might think I have a motivation beyond being a little bitch, but I don't. <laughs> I'm just the worst, and that's Iago. Iago's whole thing is that he just fucking hates everybody, and he likes fucking with them. But yeah, I really like The Tempest, but I think favorite-wise, Midsummer Night's Dream is my go-to. Mm. That's pretty good, too. Because it's just, it's so whimsical. Puck is the best Shakespeare character of all time. How have I, have I not picked up any arrows? Okay, yeah. All right. I'm not, I promise I'm not throwing. I'm just bad at this. Last time you guys got mad when I was going through really rigorously and, like, you know, getting all the trees... So I'm not doing that this time. Even though that means I'll probably die in room like this. Othello six. did not sleep with Iago's wife. Iago thinks Othello slept with his wife. I suppose that Important is a motivation. Oh shit, hold on. I think he spotted me. Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't make it a justified one. <laughs> yeah, no. <of> <laughs> One of the main reasons that Iago feels slighted is because uh, racism be like that. He thinks that he should have gotten the... Uh, yeah. the position in Cyprus, as I understand the play. Again, no, I've seen correct. it once. Yeah. I'm not going to talk so so high up on my perch, but um, I, I believe that the uh, the the wife thing was a, like, and just because I hate him, I'm going to assume he also did this other thing. Yeah, he probably also fucked my wife. <laughs> <laughs> did he? No, but are we just going to sit around and wait until he does? <laughs> <laughs> carefully, carefully. Yes! Oh! My genius knows no bounds. Um, someone's uh, Epicurean Bard says, I don't know where I heard it, but I heard Hamlet and Othello are tragedies because they have the wrong protagonist. Swap Othello and Hamlet and everything's fine. Red Isn't said that. that. Red, video? Red said that in the tragedies trope I talk. did indeed say that. <laughs> I was not the person who came up with that idea in the first place. It's a, it's a thing I've seen floating around the internet for a while. Did I kill that guy? All right, who's left? I'm imagining, like, whichever one was written first, someone's, like, uh, someone in the audience writes a scathing review of, like, oh, you know, this this, this Hamlet uh, play, it's really ridiculous that the characters sat around waiting the whole time to 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 see what happens when he could have just taken action and Shakespeare's like, all right, fucking smart guy, let's <laughs> see what we get when I switch it around. You write it, oh, then. you want an impulsive hero? Yeah, I can give you a fucking impulsive hero. <laughs> Somebody say impulsive that we're just piling oh, on red OSP yeah, references. Uh, who's that? She sounds really cool. <laughs> right, let me just get all my shit. Yes, yes, yes. This is going better than last time, which means it's about time for things to start going catastrophically wrong. I'm speaking mm. it into existence. I should rewatch Gallivant. It's so good. Like I fucking, fucking love show. that show. I don't have a lot of, like, comfort watches because I tend not to rewatch things, but I will. It's, like, Gallivant and Parks and Rec. I'll go back to those once a year, so. Yeah. The Gallivant songs all slap, and they are all saved in my Spotify. Oh, dude, they're so good. And I like how they actually, like, re-lyrics the, the opening theme to, you know, be about yes. what's happening. Yes, 
it's a lot you could tell everyone who was on that show was having a great time you know like it's everyone's working on that's like oh this is fun there's no way that they're gonna let us keep making this so let's just have a blast doing it while we're working on it uh and it completely paid off for them off with his shirt is the best song off with his shirt is one of the greatest songs ever written (laughs) the guest stars on that show too top tier if you haven't watched gallivant you should it's pretty easy to find because it didn't do really great so it's just kind of available places (laughs) oh boy oh boy oh boy Serpentine! Ooh. <laughs> well, first damage I've taken so far in this run. Not too bad, not too bad. Still pretty Could bad. Could be worse. Could be worse. <laughs> it's vengeance for all his slain brothers. Come on, buddy. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You gonna hit me with that big rock? You better kill me in one shot. <laughs> oh, he's confused. Come on, come on. Figure it out. Yeah, you are completely, completely correct. Timothy Odmanson is one of the best people. <laughs> Can't see shit. The arc of King Richard in that show is so top good. Tier. It's everything I wanted from that character more. I'm like, I don't want him to necessarily be redeemed. I just want him to be a little bitch and hang around. And he gets to do that. <laughs> While still oh, kind of yes! Oh! It's a blast. And uh, the guy who plays um, his like second in command, the bald one. I'm oh like, yeah, that guy's great. Name. He is Juggernaut in X3. Oh my god, he is! <laughs> <laughs> I was rewatching that movie recently. I'm like, oh my god, it's like a, a Leo DiCaprio pointing meme. Hey, it's the guy from Galifax. He's got one of those <laughs> fucking faces where like he looks the same in every role, and yet you don't notice because he looks like generic villain number three, and it's great. Yeah. No, but he's he's Juggernaut. So if you're watching, if you're doing a little early 2000s X Men rewatch and Gallivant at the same time, get ready. (laughs) Do it proper. (laughs) About a hero known as Gallivant. (laughs) It's so good. I'm so so, I'm glad like I'm glad they got their two seasons in because they didn't think they were going to. it would be fantastic if they had gotten a third, but I understand that this was never going. This that show had to be like prohibitively expensive to make. Um, well, I mean, they could have shot most of it at any given Ren fair and been fine, but like, sure, but more the like songwriting side and the orchestration. Oh, like that yeah. doesn't take a lot of time and effort and people to like put together songs like that. It's uh, true. It's true. That's why we don't get a, like there's there's um. Is it Smigadoon has been coming out recently? That's a musical show. My crazy ex girlfriend was a, another really great. It was like great for two seasons, and then like some of the worst TV I've ever seen after that. <laughs> but, <laughs> ain't uh, that just the oh way? Oh man, ain't that the way? <laughs> ain't that the way? Grease show. I've been getting ads for it nonstop on Pluto. Yeah, and that one looks musical. But like original concept musical TV shows where they have to do like not not Glee, where you can do co- like acapella covers of songs that already are written, but like mm-hmm. where you have to have someone on the team to like compose and then orchestrate songs uh, tend to be challenging to get through. Uh, most studios. That said, they're usually great, so it kind of works out. <laughs> I think it's worth it. <laughs> I, an ex theater kid, think that it's totally worth it. it we should do this more often. Worth it, and we should absolutely do it more often. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, um, fire arrow. Ooh, more fire arrows. Hell yeah. Piggy, you gotta not put your head into that microphone. I need it to talk. Somebody she's stop me. <laughs> she's uh, made her appearance. She said, so this is the point in the day where she starts to hang out on my lap, which is very cute. But recently she's been really fond of hanging out on my desk, which is fine until I'm trying to, you know, work from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m., give or take. What a way to make a living. I know. I haven't watched Megadoon, but I feel like I should. I've heard really good things of the musical TV shows currently coming out. And I do want to say that, like, as much as I think that the like last season of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is incredibly bad, uh, <laughs> Rachel Bloom, the creator, is fantastic, and I love her. Um, I think she can do no wrong, but something something just did not work in that season. Like, the first two seasons are genuinely some of the best TV I've ever seen, and then it just got so bad so fast. <laughs> 
I've had this conversation with my dad a lot because he really liked the show for a while, and it's like his hill that he dies on. He's like, it was fantastic, and then it was not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's the great tragedy of all serialized media. Past quality is no guarantee of future quality, even if yes. it's the same team. Like sometimes yeah. the magic just yeah. ain't there. There's an art to knowing when to end things too. Some like I don't think that's what happened with Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, but sometimes the shows will overstay their welcome a little bit, and the same team can just sort of have to try and stretch things. Um, and that, that's tough because you know it's not that anyone's doing anything wrong necessarily it's just the longevity of the show has run out and the stories have been told and now you're just sort of hanging around i mean that's one of the things about um uh art in general is that you don't always know what makes it work and you can't always recreate it you know no. I'm a little worried. That's a part of my worries with the upcoming like avatar movies and another mm. series yeah. that's planned i'm like I, I, do not I trust <laughs> yeah i'm like I, i'm not I'll, I'll probably watch it because i was a big fan of the original series and i like Korra, okay um <laughs> but i don't really know if there's anything else in that world that i'm super eager to explore and i don't know if there's enough for three movies and a whole other show you know i would um, say not especially because i think we talked about this last time i've read the um tie-in comics and i don't like them very much like, it's the same yeah. characters doing post-show adventures, and I just don't enjoy it very much. Everyone's arc's finished in a really satisfying place for me. I'm okay with, like, how everyone wrapped up. And, I, I like, I feel like there's a certain point where you get a kind of diminishing return with characters where you can keep making their life terrible over and over again or give them new conflicts <laughs> to come to. But, like, just at a certain point, home. they've developed. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, let them have their character development and live in it and move on to either new characters or just a new story. Um... Like, Star Wars ran into that problem all the time with mm. the uh, original trilogy trio. It's like, okay, well, what do we do with these guys now? Um, and sometimes it works out, like in the case of Leia, and sometimes it kind of doesn't, like in the case of Han. And, um, well, and like, I get Luke, too, sort of. Yeah, I mean, the big problem with the way that the Star Wars sequel trilogy treated the characters in the original trilogy is it basically said absolutely nothing they ever tried to do worked after the story stopped mm -hmm. being about them. So Luke doesn't get to rebuild yeah. the Jedi Order like was the entire point. And Han doesn't get to, you know, stop being a loner and a scoundrel. He has to keep, you know, running off and causing problems. And Han mm -hmm. and, and Leia can't have her family together. And, and it's just like, well, that's just a really fucking depressing way to end their arcs. What are you doing? Yeah. Why would you... And it doesn't feel like it's for any resolution. It feels just like it's for the sake of resetting the conflict. So that exactly. new characters have something to worry about. Because um, I think there is a, you know, not every character is going to have a happy ending and that's fine, but those were characters that very much were promised one and to have that taken away because of, like, writing considerations feels cheap. It's yeah. just, yeah, it doesn't feel good. Did that Lizal set himself on fire and die? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, they the bomb. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um... But it's also just like the what I don't know what people have against letting the protagonists. Ah, okay, this is getting old. Oh, let your protagonists and retire. It's fine. Hold on. Nope, 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 nope. nope, nope I'm nope. gonna hold up Ziggy and still make that work. It worked. Hearing. I'm a genius. Oh crap! Are you hearing this? Sorry, oh. just a sec. Nah. Whew. Fortunately, not. Well, that was rough. Oh, I can't carry any more melee weapons. Oh, I see. Oh, I don't really need you. I'll keep you for now. <sighs> I don't know. This is like when people are like, oh, we, we can't let this character, you know, be a good dad. Character has to be mm. a shitty dad. Mm -hmm. Character who had yeah. a bad dad has to continue to be a bad dad. And it's like, really? That seems like the one thing that character would strive to not do at any cost. You know? Maybe that's just me, but... Just feels to me like this person would be self-evaluatory enough to not do that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. What can we do to recoup that lost health? Oh, we can always eat these bad boys. Not all the way up. Oh, that's too much. That's overkill. Yeah. Perfect. And like, I think there's a way to do legacy content well you know like i think there's a good way there's ways to have legacy characters and stuff and for it to work like i personally enjoy like zuko's presence in legend of korra i think that that works out relatively well i think you see that he is 
still like has the character development and arc that he underwent in the original series like influencing him and clearly he learned from that and has continued to grow and be fire lord or whatever but i think yeah. that like ultimately you get to still see that he has not just had all of his progress reset because the narrative demands it he's doing the things that he would you kind of expect him to do after the events of the main series and i think that that's a relatively good way to handle that. It you is. Know? It also helps um, that he gets to be a good dad, which is always nice. Yeah. He had a bad dad. He learned... The real marker of a <laughs> returning hero is are they a good dad or not? Because yeah, but what frustrates me is they make dad. Aang a bad dad. Like, yeah. what the fuck? I don't know. It also feels like none of them really are the same characters they used to be. It's like, oh, you know mm. what I really think Toph would choose to do with her life? Become a cop. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. God, whatever. She really should have just been the next Earth King after Boomy. Mm -hmm. Or what? Not Earth King. Whatever the fuck Boomy thing was. Yeah. Like and uh, the thing is, King of Amashu. Right? Uh, yeah. 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 It's like why, why yeah. does Amashu have a king when there is already an Earth King? Who cares? Um, I can also imagine like like Toph. You know, someone's like, "Oh, wouldn't you be the Earth Queen?" And Toph's like, "Fuck you, Earth no. King." <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a Tumblr post about like. You know, what if Boomy is like, oh, Toph, you should uh, take my title when I die. And Toph is like, all right, I'm King Boomy. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, it does. That's the problem you run into, right? Is like, I feel like people tend to think of their characters in terms of the context in which they originally and currently exist, right? So like when you're writing a story, you probably have characters that you're writing. And in the process of writing those characters, perhaps you have an idea of who they are and how they would respond to situation. But then when you take them out of that and put them into, you know, a future story or whatever it is, all of a sudden the situations are different and those characters' context in which they exist is different. And it can, if you are used to only writing them in some one particular context and now they have to occupy a different role in a different story, that can be a tricky switch to make from a writing standpoint and just from like, convincing your audience as well that these characters have this particular change happened to them in this manner for these purposes and this is how they react now um it's a it's a challenging space to write in and create in and i'm always impressed when someone can handle it even remotely well and not disappointed when it's handled poorly but like oh i have absolutely sort of like disappointed. resigned <laughs> disappointed yeah but like like a resigned disappointment like, ah disappointed yeah, yet not surprised drink. yeah that's yes, a move. yes 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 you got it exactly <laughs> i mean it's it's always a bummer it's like boy i really you know i was invested in these characters and their long-term happiness and it really felt like when you gave them happily ever after it should have meant that they got to be happy forever mm -hmm. and then you wrote a sequel and we're like it wouldn't be interesting if they got anything that they wanted because it's like, God forbid the characters achieve even one of their goals in the long term and then move on to another yeah. goal like people do. <sighs> ah, it's fine. It's cool. It's cool. Ah, anyway. I mean, that is probably the least of my problems with the Star Wars the sequel trilogy. But yeah. we don't need to have, we don't need no. to relitigate that again. <laughs> no. As much as I have problems with some of the ways the Star Wars sequel trilogy was handled, I do actually still love Star Wars. It's been a show, I, it's stuff I enjoyed since I was a kid. Andor uh, is enough to redeem of it. any I, crime Star Wars has yeah, committed. So here's I have not thing. watched it yet. I understand I, that it's uh, great. Yeah, I haven't watched Andor, and I'm, wa I'm making a point to watch every other piece of Star Wars media that I would ever want to watch before watching Andor. Oh, because once I watch Andor, I will not want to watch anything <laughs> else because if everything that I've heard about Andor is any indication, it ruins every other piece of Star Wars media for you because it shows what it's like when Star Wars is actually unequivocally really, really, really good. Andor is going to give you standards for Star Wars. I'm so sorry. Because here's the thing, like, I, I, I am a, I'm a boy of the prequel period. The Star Wars that I, I know is a, a very simple formula. There are parts of it that are good. There are parts of it that are good if you engage with the paratext, and there are parts of it that are dumb as shit. Mm -hmm. And I, a prequel memer at heart, 
interact with all these things in, in, and just take it as it is and don't try to be like, oh, well, this is stupid. It's like, oh, haha, ha, sand is coarse and rough. And that's hilarious. Like, you know, post the meme instant upvote. And it's just like, yes, this is great. I love this. So when Kenobi was doing dumb shit with the absolute slapstick routine of breaking out Leia in the fourth episode, I'm like, this is great. This is just more prequel stuff. And I was having a blast, even though it was objectively ridiculous and stupid. I was like, no, this is this is prequels. I'm in. I'm fully on board with this. <laughs> but as soon as I watch Andor, that will be broken for me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, I'm so good with taking Star Wars so unseriously and still really enjoying it. But the Andor seems to be promising that I will want to take it seriously. And I'm like, Andor no, 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 no. will actually make you here. feel like the Empire is evil and bad and must be destroyed. Like, mm. it's remarkably impressive. God's sake. I also, um, uh, someone asks in, in chat, I, I have seen Clone Wars. Uh, it is super good, uh, especially um, the later seasons and the 2003 Getting Tartakovsky animated Clone yes. Wars. It was two hours. It's perfect. I love it so much. It does slap pretty did hard. Did you see that he was uh, talking about, they did an interview with like a Polygon or something, but it uh, re going back to symbiotic titan and like finishing that show mm. out. yes <laughs> like, wow a blast from the past <laughs> yeah honestly absolute highlight was getting to listen to him speak at oh, c2e2 that's awesome right before the world shut down the last yeah. thing we got to do and it was really funny because he wanted to show this one cartoon from from Russia that he grew up with. Yeah. It was like, you know, in the USSR, we didn't, I don't, um, where was he born? Hold on. It was Andy something like that. Tartakovsky. Which of the constituent republics was he born in? Uh, he was born in Moscow, okay. Uh, so in Russia, we, you know, we had like four cartoons and it was mostly this like weird horny wolf uh, <laughs> and the hijinks they got into. And he showed this little cartoon and Red and I, I remember we were leaning to each other like, yeah, no, I think I see where he gets like the no dialogue at all. This is just animation kind of yeah. thing. Because um, he was like, yeah, and then I, you know, I did some stuff where it's like people talk and I didn't really like that so much. So I just kind of went back to only communicating things through animation. I'm like, yes, Gendy, yes. Yes. <laughs> Live your truth, girl. All right. I feel like that guy had a weapon, but I don't know where it went. And then, yeah, uh, animated General Grievous in the Clone Wars was so like oh, pants good. shittingly powerful that everyone else had to scramble to be like wait hold on how do we make this guy embarrassing and stupid he's, he's too so strong <laughs> he killed shaggy and shaggy wasn't even a you know half pound oh my god what shaggy the jedi he's canon in the gendy thingy yeah and then he gets fucking murdered by general grievous it's great i'm glad that the 2003 clone wars is on disney plus it's also on YouTube. Scandal. <laughs> <laughs> Scandal. Alrighty. Better be good stuff in here. When uh, Indigo, when you were first starting Movie Struck, I was like, "Can we watch 2003 yes. Clone Wars?" And you were like, "There is one rule. <laughs> <laughs> there was one rule. It so all it has to be is a film." And this is not, and I was like, all right, fine, fair, fair, let's do Gladiator. <laughs> I understand why you wanted to pick it, but I do, it's the one, the it's one the one rule. rule the show has. It was like <laughs> one of the rule. first 10 episodes. I'm like, is. my dude. I'm not going to pick the rule this early. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Yes, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo is in Star Wars. He gets killed by General yes. Grievous. Canonically. Canonically. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Boba. Yeah, pretty close to 2,000 red. What's the uh, stretch goal for that? I don't know. I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> red does the master <laughs> trials again. No, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> That's not how any of this works. Is that the line from, um, from Glass Onion? Uh... Did I get that right? <laughs> None of this is right. Uh, it's something like that. Something like that. It's like, it's not like this is all so stupid. Uh, in, in oh, so lines. dumb, it's brilliant! No! No, it's just, just dumb. dumb! Just dumb. Oh, fuck. Again, I, maybe it's just, I had to watch it for Movie Struck, but, uh, Logan Lucky, another great movie where, um, Daniel Craig gets to just kind of do it a little bit for a while. 
He just gets to kind of play a character with a capital C, and it's real. I, I'm so happy for him getting to do this. I like, I like him as James Bond a lot. But you, there's a certain point where you're like, man, this guy is so tired. <laughs> just let him do literally anything Whoa. else. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh okay. gosh! Oh man! Oh gee, Rick. You just got oh no man no oh my God. don't bring that evil here what are you doing no, I'm sorry I, as soon as I said it I'm like oh that was wrong <laughs> oh great yeah why would I be able to get up through this thing that would be silly um... <sighs> no my raft I need that Link Link what the fuck are you doing. Oh, I pitch the boy. idea of the OS pod to red and blue or Oz pod, as I try to get everyone to say. Uh, <laughs> limited success on that one, but um, decent I, traction, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's doing okay. Uh, not the pod. I mean, the podcast is doing fine, but the getting people to say Oz pod. Yeah, the, 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 the Oz pod itself specifically. Yeah, um, I wrote a pitch document that I emailed to them, and in it I outlined all of the different aspects that would go into producing the podcast, what it would require, what the format would look like, an idea of like a sample episode. Um, and I asked them to read it over with an open mind, and then they sent me a gift back saying that they were in and the podcast happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Which, honestly, I, I really appreciated that you guys uh, gave me the time of day with that one, because I was, at that point, only editing for Blue. Uh, I appeared on, like, a live stream or two, and it was very open-minded and kind of you to oh. let your contractor uh, send you a full pitch for <laughs> a different show entirely and actually read it over. And I really enjoy making the podcast, so I'm happy that we've continued it. But, yeah, I do. Um, I do. I, I gave you guys props for uh being so kind and open-minded in that regard. Yeah, I mean, it and, turned out um, spectacularly. <laughs> yeah, but you know, when, you, when you're reading over a pitch for something, or when something's handed to you, you know, you never know if it's going to be successful. And so uh, yeah. it can be a, a, a little oh, nerve-wracking, and I, I understand how not everyone wants to be approached with pitches, but how. you guys are... We're really great about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I wrote, like, a, a little pitch bible, basically, for the podcast, and that's kind of what we based everything on. Um, I had done some podcast production before, but the OS Pod was really the first show that I end to end developed uh so i was oh, doing a lot of research in the process of writing that pitch um it's i really recommend if you are ever going to start whether it's like making a series of youtube videos or a podcast or whatever it is write yourself a little outline of like a sample episode and just write out and list everything that you need explicitly to make whatever it is that you're trying to make um it doesn't have to be a to-do list necessarily but it just gives you a really great idea of um, just how much time, effort, and uh, labor is going to go into something, and I feel like that really helps determine like what the best production method is going to be, um, because not everything needs to... like If you are doing Rolling with Difficulty, for example, which is three to five hour long episodes, heavily produced, uh, lots of post-production that you need to do, very hard to excuse me, make technically Maybe it would behoove you to have simpler social medias and other things. Like, there's a reason that Rolling with Difficulty doesn't have a TikTok. It's because I have no time to make those. <laughs> but, like, a simpler show, like uh, Movie Struck, for example, where the big time sink is just booking guests, you very easily can get away with putting a little extra effort into doing yeah. additional stuff like social media or any sort of, like, special events and things. And that's why that show, sometimes I tend to do, like, the patron drive because it's a few extra episodes and it's easier to swing that. Um, and just having that outline and kind of understanding like where your labor is going to go can be a really useful tool, uh, even if you're not pitching to someone else, just to understand like what your um, workflow and what your effort is going to look like going forward. I also love doing it. It's a, I'm a huge nerd for this shit, so I would just I mean, be I, doing this for fun anyway. I, I love the podcast. It's there are a lot of things that it accomplishes like materially in terms of like mm -hmm. it's more content in between every episode it's a way for people who are you know engaged in the community to to feel like there's there's more stuff that they can kind of chew on if they if they want more without having to just you know rewatch the same old episodes it's, it feels like part of the conversation but just like the ability for us to just like talk in a room together mm -hmm. not in a room but like in a studio together and like actually chat is something that i I feel like was was missing for a long time because it's like the channels you know red videos blue videos but 
so rarely were we actually like in a voice call together uh, and the podcast was like ta-da here we are (laughs) it's also a great chance i really enjoy we have guests on because uh one of the things that i mean red and i were talking about this a little bit before the podcast but one of the things with working in like content creation and youtube and this sort of space is that you just kind of don't have co-workers very often yeah um and more importantly you don't have co-workers that are in the same area as you and it can be kind of isolating so get having this like thing yeah. that we could just ask people to come on and chat with us for an hour uh it's just really nice just a yeah. nice little excuse to like we had sarah Z on the uh, and joe cat and echo gillette on the last great. couple episodes and those were extremely fun because you get to ch- chat with someone that maybe you don't talk to on a voice call very often um and it's yeah it's part of what i really enjoy about the show also talking to you guys but you know <laughs> <laughs> we can do that anytime i talk to you guys every yeah. other week <laughs> Okay, that was fun. Let's see. Cat update. How are the kitties doing? Ziggy is currently trying to eat the soundproofing foam I have stored under my desk, and I have to keep moving her a little bit with my foot. She craves that foam. (laughs) How's Cleo? Uh, She is currently uh, somewhere else. Uh, (laughs) Actually, it's coming up on time for me to give her some food, so I might do that in a hot sec. Mm Mm-hmm-hmm. Let's see if the icing on this cake has hardened into an edible with a spoon consistency. Oh my god. I think we're getting there. Holy shit. Okay. Whew, that was pretty mm. perilous. All right, let's get whatever's in that chest and not die in the process. It may have overbaked this cake a little bit, but I can't no. be that mad at it. It's not bad. It's just like a little less moist than I would care for. It's dry. It's very dry. I gotta rewatch Bake Off again. The good seasons. <laughs> Greedy. Uh, I have not seen the new Mario movie yet, but I've heard that Peach's song so many times. Yeah, I've heard that too. It's fine. Jack Black has done significantly better. <laughs> I think people are just like, wow, the one part of this movie that made me feel something beyond, yup, that's a Mario reference. I don't know. Not to read too far into it. It's just like, I think I was dreading this movie, and then it turned out to be fine. But fine, I don't know. I feel like it almost would have been better for it if it was awful. Because then people would have been talking about it and how it was bad. People still love the, you know, the, the dumb live-action Mario Brothers movie. It's stupid. It's not good. Oh, I love but it people so much. love it. Yeah, exactly. It's, That's the Italian-American culture right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's so aggressively itself. And I love it. Uh-huh. And then this one, it just seems to be like, yeah, it's a it's Mario movie. Sure is. And like people will be like, yeah, it doesn't really let any of the emotional moments breathe. You know, all the characters feel kind of flat. And it's like, yeah, because this exists to be a Mario movie. It, it's not mm-hmm. it's not doing anything else. Yeah. Um, there's a question in chat. Is the podcast something I could jump into? Or is it a start with episode one thing? You could absolutely just jump into the most recent episode. The yeah, it's OS podcast. We it's talk about show. the most recent, yeah, it's an after show. We talk about the most recent videos and we answer fan Q and A. Um, you can, uh, I mean, you're more than welcome to listen to the backlog, but if you jumped into this week's episode or the bonus episode, you would be not really missing any uh, past uh, like story beats. It, it's it's really just a kind of shooting the shit discussion style. Yeah. There is a a lore that is developed <laughs> over the course of of there is seventy the almost time episodes. Heist. Um, <laughs> which is itself a movie pitch we've been developing over the course of several episodes, but that is pretty much the only ongoing uh, bit. <laughs> You're not going to miss too, too much there if you haven't caught all of those questions in the Q&A. Yeah. Context clues, we try to make it jump into a bowl. Gosh. Yes. We always are covering, on on the regular episodes, we do bonus episodes throughout the year, like the artist special that just went up. But on the regular, every other week episode uploads, it's always the most recent two videos that OSP has done. Um, And then Q&A that I try to tailor to the time period and video releases, but does not always necessarily uh, need to be 
related to the month in which it comes out, but yeah, if you just jump into the most recent episode, you'll be totally fine. Wait, what the fuck? Wait. <laughs> He's going back to sleep. What? He's taking a little nap. Oh, if his health He's bar tired. resets, I'm gonna be fucking mad. Get up. Come on, face be coward. Oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> Oh, my stams. Right now, it's that. Come on. Shit. Oh, boy. While we've been doing uh, all this live streaming, I've been in the background working on a thumbnail for the next video. Uh, I'm gonna drop mm -hmm. this in the OS page chat. Uh, oh, let, oh. Yeah, let me know what you think of this one. I'd love to look Might at it, good. man, but uh, I'm a little bit busy. I'll take Indigo's I'll give uh, you feedback. <laughs> I wish I could post images in chat. Darn. It's good that we can't. I mean, I wish we so could. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> I think it's good. I would either make the uh, blue text a little bigger and overlap the shield a bit more, or... That's what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Okay, it's cool. just a little too, like, one-third, two-thirds right now. And then you could, like, center it a little bit more. Yeah, I can do that. Did that do nothing? Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, yeah, I guess it was too much to hope for that this weapon actually did something. <laughs> Oh shit. Don't get greedy, don't get greedy, don't get greedy! Whoa. Mm -hmm. We're good. Oh good, as long as you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I was worried for a second that you weren't good, but seeing as you are good, it's... We are totally the good. most good. <laughs> Everybody stop talking, please. <laughs> Wait, how am I in the water? Ah! I think I'm gonna hit you with one more. Yeah, yeah. Show me those images. Stop hiding your fucking eyes. Come on, show yourself. Is he okay? Like, you gotta go for something else. You can't be eating foam. I need you to understand this. <laughs> it's the most unfocused stream ever, and honestly, I'm having a great time. Ha! Ha! We fucking yeah, did it! We got it! I think you could Thank even you. you could cheese the blue text over to the left a smidge more, but it's fine. Smidge more? Like I would. Oh my god! Oh, I'll cheese it! I'll cheese it! Like so, the the um first letter of the first word is right near <gasps> the chin of the statue. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That also solves another problem with censorship. Uh. Nice. <laughs> Nice. If you see what yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Had to take the, uh, the the clone stamp brush uh, to that area of the statue. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, for those of you in chat who are curious, uh, I, I'm making a sequel video to my Sparta one from the other week, uh, which is a, a story from, from later on in Sparta's history. And I have a picture of a statue of a Spartan. Naturally, popular image of Spartans is no pants dong out, so I have to rectify <laughs> that on the thumbnail of the video somehow. <laughs> Uh, I beat the first stage of the Master Trials. <laughs> nice! <Woo! laughs> Good job. Oh. So the second one then at 2k, right? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's yeah. less than 100. No! No! <laughs> Fred, this was your idea of, oh, we can find ways yeah. to slow me down so that... <laughs>
I'll try the second one for 2K, but when I die, I'm going back to actually getting shit done. Yes. <laughs> All right, show me the big money. Oh, oh no, oh no, it's guys. already half. Less than a hundred dollars away we from making Red do part two. Come on, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Anonymous, for that hundred dollar donation. Ah, putting let's us over go. Two God damn it. <laughs> I've never <laughs> even done this one before. I, I have no idea what's coming. It's a learning Not experience only... that we can all enjoy together. Yeah, it's for a worthy cause, donating to the ACLU, uh, our current focus being on trans rights, but also just the general good that they do. And also, we're making Red do more shit she doesn't want to do. <laughs> you know, if I'd known that I could have tempted you guys into donating by simply suffering, I would have done that before. Why do you think funny. when we did the uh, Cats discourse on that Stray stream, we got, like, two, uh, 1k in, like, 20 minutes? Immediately. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> All I'm saying is you should have me and Sarah back and just let us let us loose and, and noir and we can just uh chat cats for hours. And if you wanna make a stop, you better start doing it. Alright, it auto saved, but I don't trust like that, so we are saving anyway. Ziggy. Oh no, never trust like that. I know you want to be fed, but if I feed you now you're gonna be hungry at five PM, so you gotta chill out. Alright, let's do a little bit of well, I guess we gotta. I guess we simply have to. I'm not gonna use all my good hearts food. We need that for killing Ganon later. We could just cook. We could, but I'm actually currently out of meal space. So we're gonna, we're gonna, fine, fine. All right, let's go. Oh, cool, I can redo the beginning trials whenever I want. How, how thoughtful, how considerate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zelda, I'd be saving you right now, but the internet is making me do this. <laughs> I've been bullied into doing good things for the world. <laughs> Not malnourishing Ziggy. She's <laughs> on a diet. <laughs> if I feed her too frequently and she doesn't have more food later in the day, she, like, screams for hours. Hmm. Important distinction. Sandwich goes down. Must acquire still more power to wield the true splendor of the Master Sword. You must fortify your mind, body, and soul by eradicating all obstacles that appear in this realm. Mm-hmm. In this illusory realm of sacred mystery, anything could happen. We could kiss or something. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> all that you obtain will be lost upon your return to the reality you know. Those in here with the master story, yada yada yada. Okay, cool, great, awesome. <laughs> you good? I think he's going for my cake. No. Oh my god! Already? No. I don't have any fucking weapons! Hold on. Eh. No. Die, die, die. Okay. No, my bow! Fuck! <laughs> ah, this is already off to a roaring start. These master trials are vicious. Well, I'm glad somebody said it. Coming down. Ooh, hello. Wait. Indigo, I did a tiny bit more recompositioning. I'm gonna send this one more to you. Yes, 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 yes. Graphic design is my passion, Blue. Thank you for uh, acknowledging that. <laughs> Shit. The royal dong of the Spartan king remains blurred, but the text is a little better aligned. <laughs> oh my god. So as oh to preserve god. the rest of the statue's screen presence. <laughs> excellent, excellent, good. Ziggy. I am begging you. No, no. <laughs> I had a bad Farley horse the other day. I really don't want to keep him having to negotiate not getting bit by a cat as well. Alright, great. Fantastic. Yep. <laughs> well, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> uh. Can I... will it... Oh, oh. Yes. Alright. 
great. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> yeah, I think that looks good. Perfect. Um, Shipping it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh. Hello. Floating fruits. That's weird. I'll be right back. I'm going to refill my coffee while we are just a uh, lull of sorts. Cool. BRB. All right. Let's see if I can hover on up there. Yes! Where'd the chest go? Did I kill it? Ever since you were like, hey, so I realized I can do, like, art stuff on my iPad while I'm on calls and other things, I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> You've unlocked the secret. <laughs> it's so fun. It's like my... My brain that requires attention at all times gets distracted by the conversation, so my actual productivity brain can, like, do shit. It's incredible. Yes. Okay. All right, what I fresh hell agree. is this? Oh, God damn it. This whole stream I've been playing Minecraft on the side. <clears throat> Multitasking. I downloaded files also, but that's not a very active task. Not as such, no. Also feeling a lot better than I was last week because not only have okay. I managed to like sleep off the the sick that I was feeling, um, still not COVID, just honest to goodness, regular shitty sick. Um, Every on time Saturday you travel, morning, I feel like you get plain crud, you know. Yeah. On on Saturday morning, I, I took a shower with you know hot steam, you know, cleanse myself, and I I <laughs> walked out and I I said to Cyan like if I lived in the ancient or medieval period. I would claim that shower has magical properties because I feel so much better having walked out than I did going in more than probably any other shower I've taken in my life. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> uh, and also I've got a, a Panera Charged Lemonade on my desk, which is, as Austin has said, for doing uh, rolling with difficulty prep, those things get you going. Let's not, let's not mince words here. Austin didn't know they were caffeinated, and so he thought he was going crazy for like a week. <laughs> He was drinking like two or three of them a day because it was like, oh like you get the free refills from the Panera Sip Club. Austin, no! Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm not faulting their ability to let you like be a nice little focus treat or whatever. And if you want lemonade, drink your lemonade. But maybe don't drink three heavily oh. caffeinated charged lemonades a day. That's really funny. My condolences. It was incredibly funny when he came to the group chat with that. <laughs> I say this as a woman who's just gotten her refill of coffee for the day. Uh, what am I drink missing? responsibly. Thank you. Who is left to kill? Oh, wait, is there. No. Uh oh. He wants to try to explode his heart. Good for him. <laughs> Gamer juice indeed. <laughs> All right. Who dares? Hello? I keep forgetting that MatPat remains extremely popular because I watched him like at the beginning and kind of fell off right when he introduced film theory. Mm. But then his brand is just like exploded and he's more popular than ever. And I'm like, wait, I haven't watched his stuff in like years and years and years <laughs> because I forget that I'm not the only person who exists sometimes. So I'm like, wait, <laughs> still a th what weird. Um, uh, Austin is the dungeon master of rolling with difficulty. Aha, the DD podcast that Red and I are them. both on. Um, that I also produce because this is just what I do with all of my free time now. Yeah. I'm not oh, the man, producer of Reginald's podcast, but I do edit it because I already work as Dom's editor, so that is what now the a fourth show. Why did that, that work? <laughs> See, for some reason, it let me sneak strike an enemy who I was attacking openly oh. at the time. <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. I this guess. game's combat system has some weird edges on it. <laughs> well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's lulling me to a false sense of security. Ooh, the full bounty. Now, if only that food would float down here so I could actually get it. Ah! These are some fucking aggressive updrafts. Alright, come on. Just a little closer. <laughs> gimme, gimme. <laughs> They're taunting me. Floating just out of reach. trying to lure in a finicky cat. Aha. Alrighty. Alright, what are we gonna do for, uh, 3k? Master Trials again! What? <laughs> okay! So if I die, 3k means I have to try this again, is the gimmick. I don't know, man. I, you make the rules you, here. Right, I'm gonna let you set the rules on this one. 
All right, I appreciate that. Because obviously we're having fun here. Uh, Indigo and I, I think more than you. Um, <laughs> you are doing great. I will say you're doing great. Thank you. I'm having a good time. But I'll I'll Funky, let you determine what fun. happens at at 3K. No, I needed those arrows. Damn it. Ah! <laughs> oh my God! It happened. I'm free. Gatehouse Lionels. That's actually a good. Um, what was that's that? That's a good suggestion. Gatehouse Lionels at, Ooh, at 3K. That's a good Ooh. idea. Oh hey. Good news. <laughs> She's dead. I didn't realize that all of the red bacoblins had bomb arrows and they were uh, able to shoot me around corners. And now we've learned. <sighs> what have we learned? Nothing important. <laughs> I've learned that Not I'm free. Mistakes, I'm free. Certainly. All right. Let's see. Where should we go now? We'll, we'll come back when we hit, if and when we hit 3K. I will come back and try the, the, the medium trials again. But for now... Uh, I've got, frankly, too much food. So I think... Yeah, okay. Instead of just sneaking into the shrine in Hyrule that we already have, let's, um... Let's go to the tower. Navigate from there. Give you guys a little time to rally a battle strategy. And the Master Sword's powered up, so now it does 40 base damage, and I think 80 when it's powered up? Hmm. At least. Mm-hmm. All right. Nice. Okay. Oh, no. Not a guardian. Link sees one guardian, it's like, ah, <laughs> uh, sorry, Zelda, you're not getting saved. <laughs> Those things suck. Oh, man, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do it. I just got this cramp, and oh, man, it's just not a good time, you know? You I didn't really stretch much when I got out of the uh, the Shrine of Resurrection. I ran over to the edge of that cliff and kind of pulled a muscle in my yeah. excitement to not be dead again. <laughs> and I'm oh, like 118 now, night. so like, you know... Sometimes you just sleep funny, and that's that's your lot for the rest of the month. I saw a meme where it's like, body, get eight hours of sleep. Me, here is eight hours of sleep. Body, no, you did it wrong. Now you have a pain in your neck. What the <laughs> hell? Whoop. 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 No, not like that. Scott Manning with a $250 donation to the ACLU. Thank you so much, thank Scott. You, Appreciate you. that. Sorry, a few things are happening right now. I don't know if anyone heard that, but a very loud truck just honked in the back <laughs> of my, uh, my audio. Oh, and the Yiga Clan is attacking. Oh my god, he's just instantly dead. The Yiga Clan would stand by while the Guardian shot you and then took credit for it. <laughs> Definitely. Ah, good. I don't like the Skywatcher. Ah! Huge protection has ran out. That's okay. All's well. It's gonna be just fine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> it's fine, guys. We have Mipha. We're good. Mipha's like, come on, come on, come on. Die, die, die. <laughs> Let me at him. All right. That was fun. Easy, easy. Oh. The trick here is you just gotta show no fear. It's more afraid of you than you are of it. Oh, that's convenient. These style moblin thingies spawned under the guardian and made it unable to run away. <laughs> and then they punched me through it. Cool. If it works, it works, right? Yes. Great. Ow! Sir! <laughs> I have a prior engagement. I'll pencil you in when I can. Ooh, a core. No one has any Good parry, holy oh, shit. Either. Thank you. Diggy, you gotta sit literally anywhere else. <laughs> Alright, how are we looking on the donation track? We're about uh, we halfway are at... to 3k. Oh, yep, boy. just $2 shy of 2500 Oh boy. Oh, you know what? 
we do have Mifa, but I also have too many meals, so I may as well, like, you know, eat some. I remain perpetually impressed by how much this community is able to raise every time we do a stream. Like, these are Seriously. these are big numbers, and I know it's like, oh, you know, we get a few thousand every time, but like, holy shit, you guys, this is really, this is really spectacular, and it's yeah. not just, it is not only the people who are dropping, you know, uh, hundreds of dollars, a thousand dollars, which, you know, every, every time that happens, it's still really impressive, but like, there are one or two people who might do a big donation, but the other 9,000 is all of you guys donating, you know, one, five, 20, yeah. 50, the, the, the smaller amounts that still add up um, to a, mm -hmm. a tremendously large number. Uh, and it is really, really cool. And we still immensely appreciate it, even though we, uh, we don't call out every single one. Um, it is sick as hell. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. With that, I'm going to take a quick go break to go uh, make sure that Cleo has her her lunch. I think, chat, do we give Cleo the chicken or the salmon today? She is an absolute fiend for salmon. Salmon, definitely. Salmon? Oh, we're both yeah. wedged. We're both wedged. Like, I also on. really enjoy salmon, but Ziggy just straight up doesn't like anything chicken. Like, if she can avoid it, she will not eat chicken. Don't scandalous. Yeah, we're getting a lot of salmons in chat. Yep. Solid. All right. Salmon it is. Every once in a while, Cyan and I will, will have some salmon for dinner, and then we also get Cleo salmon, and it's like we're all eating the same meal, <laughs> even though we're, we're not. One of them is cat food and comes out of a can. Uh, <laughs> but it's like we all have salmon. Yeah. Now, Cleo, stop I'm jumping on the table fish. and eat your own food. <laughs> okay. All right. Back in a sec. Nice. Adios. Quick, Blue's gone. Do your best Blue impression. Best Blue impressions. Oh, man. I just love it when books are really short, but also really long. <laughs> Truly my favorite experience. Nothing should be more than a hundred pages. That includes the Iliad. Come on, let me up. Don't worry, baby girl, I'm coming for you, Zelda. Oh, hold on. Oh, this funny rock. It's not working so well. That's okay. <laughs> we'll horse tilt this. We'll Skyrim it. Quickly, to the Oponomobile! All right, fine. I guess I'll go the way you're supposed to. Last time we managed to get the motorcycle on top of one of those big guardian pillar things around the castle, and then we rode it all yes. the way down. Twice, because that's where it Very respawned cool. me after I Very died in the Master Trials. A lot of fun coming at you from there. Yeah, it's always a good time. Always a funky, fresh time. <laughs> Let's see if we can go up. I'm gonna send a picture of Ziggy's current viewing position to the group chat for later. Nope. Okay. Nope. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Some presents. All right, guys. We've reached Hyrule Castle, but there's still time to stop me. Ah, my bike. All right. Hold on. I don't think that there should be a hundred page limit chat. This is a blue opinion. I'm just parodying <laughs> yeah. you back, is my impression of him. I'm okay. I frequently read books more than 100 pages. I think that that's a very normal oh, <laughs> length for books raining. to be. Okay, we're good. Raining will make this difficult. Or will it? I like this picture because it does really highlight just how much Ziggy has eaten. The protection is now ready to roll. Oh, 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 oh. Windsock as well. Oh wait, did we just find the West Passage? Oh boy, you guys don't have as much time as I thought you did. <laughs> I gotta get out of that Master Trials concept of like, alright, I gotta bomb everything. Uh... <laughs> hey, nice, a diamond. On the hand, maybe quite continental. <laughs> Diamond Darling's best friend. Diamond Darling's best friend. And then Zelda is also there! Ah! I missed the pebblet. One survivor. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's following me! <laughs> Alright, we're good, we got it. We're good. Everything's fine. Where are we supposed to go from here? I don't remember. Wait, hold on. 
Oh, no, this is the weird one that doesn't actually go anywhere. All right, cool. I'm good. Using the Charge Master Sword on um, Keys feels like a crime a little bit, but it's very funny. It's like using the one hit obliterator on things. Yeah. At a certain point, it's just the best way. Yeah. Alright, let's see. What's happening? Oh, Alright, we just need to get up a little bit. Alright, Rivali's Gale. How we looking? Not too bad, not too bad. Alright, so if we hit 3k, I'm gonna try the Master Trials again. And I think if we hit 4k, I'm gonna fight the Gatehouse Lionels, or at least one of them. Yes. And eventually, you know, we do have to actually go deck Ganon. <laughs> yeah, we are going to deck Ganon. Decking Ganon is my goal. Let me just... Yeah. Oh yeah, we re-dyed the Zoro armor last time. So is it red now? Yes, it's red now. Oh, let me up. What the fuck is happening? Why can I not swim up this waterfall as I intended? Oh, now it... Let's... Now we are Mipha and Sidon colored. Nice. Changing of the guard, as it were. Oh boy. Okay. Great. Wow, that did a lot of work. Alright, let's see. Okay, so this is the first gatehouse. This is where one of the Lionels would be? Oh, I don't think my shrine sensor works in here. Well, I'm just looking on the map. I believe these round buildings, like the one I pointed at right now and the one farther along the path, are the gatehouses. And then you follow the path through and it leads you right up to the boss fight. Um, well. I mean, it could be kind of Only fun. Only one way to find out. That's a good point. I guess 4K would be fighting the other Lionel at that point. Banzai! Oh, what an interesting round room this is. Ah! Oh, it's just a blue one? Come on. He is absolutely fascinating. And she has been for the last couple weeks. Oh, I should drink this. I made this. Do my little what desk. The? Do my little edits. Oh, my little drink. Oh, my hold on. Trying to I see your face into the glass. Ah! Okay, Lionel. I am busy. Not right now. All right, we're good. Sorry, a few things were happening. It's okay. Are you done? Get it out of your system, big man? Oh, hold on, am I using the right bow? Yeah, we're fine. Alright, this is re Oh, you know what? I think I know why these things exist. Because they make it harder to auto-target the Lionel because it's farting out random bad guys at you. been this over leveled for this part of the game before. <laughs> well I can't wait for like two weeks from now when we're all gonna be hideously under leveled and going into whatever part of the game we want to. I'm excited! Ooh. Oh nice bomb arrows. Alright, what else we got? Alright, I think we went into this backwards. No. Okay, so this is the way forward. Very well. Let us if it must be done, it shall be done. Oh. 
Well, I'd love to, but there's 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 some schmutz in the way. There's some mm. stuff. Some goop. Not goop. We hate anything goop. but goop. Goop. All right. Uh, yeah. Why not? Okay. What could go wrong? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of that schmutz. A lot of that goo. That's okay. Ooh, as it were. Ooh. <laughs> well, that was overkill and a half. <laughs> Is that gonna get rid of all of it? Hey, if it works, it works. Huh, that worked. <laughs> if it works, it works. And it worked! Oh, shit, mm. hold on. The roof protection is now ready to <laughs> Thanks, Daruk. Extremely helpful. Come on, Daruk. <laughs> yeah! Okay, great. Well, now... Hold on a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> I'm gonna go in, because I think it's just gonna be another blue Lionel. But I want to get rid of these guys first, and I like how clever that is. Like, it's designed to funnel you inside the arena. And then these two chuckleheads are just sitting here, waiting. Working. Great. Mission accomplished. Right? Sure. Wait, is it dead yet? It's how far was it? Okay, now it's dead. It's not quite dead yet. Mostly dead. It's slightly alive. All right, where's the other one? You think you can escape me? Don't look at me like that, Ziggy. Standing stationary on the other side of this thingy. You can sleep. I won't stop you. You've... You're a cat. You have no rules. You have no job. Take that pile of blankets that you seem so fond of, so I never used to think about it. Oh my god. It's been at zero for- okay, fine. Now it's dead. Good work, team. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, falling for the obvious trap. Can't wait to check out what's in this normal gatehouse. What? Uh, <gasps> yes. Ah, my old enemy. We meet again, Silver Lionel. Silver? I think uh -huh. this one is silver. It might be black, actually. It's... No, it's a white main Lionel, so I guess it is silver. Silver Lionel? You got this right. It's good. I wanted another Lionel sword. Thanks to Ruby. Oh, I'm gonna need to recharge the Master Sword. Great, okay. Then we'll break it. Perfect, so it'll recharge. And in the meantime... I like how you can just hear me furiously clicking. <laughs> it is just really... Quick, 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 quick. Oh, let me- I need a Rose's Fury recharge, too. Perfect. It's okay, I'll be getting a new one soon. Uh, what next? Eh, may as well. Whoop! Wrong direction to dodge, that's okay. Hey, come back. Oh, hold on. I'd like to consider that this one would also be farting out bad guys. Oh, I'm busy. Bro! Dude! My man! Alright, fine. Oh, me. What are you doing? <sighs> Alright, I guess we're just going back to using an actually strong weapon. Whatever. Fine. Oh, do that again. Oh, is he dead? Oops. Alright, where's the eyeball? Show me the eyeball. I see mouths. Ah, there's two of them. Ah, hold on. Not yet. There we go. Now we're good. Okay. 
jeez, fine. Yeah, I guess I can kill you if you're that insistent. All right, what's in here? If you insist. Nice. You know, I've always been a little bit reluctant to use ancient arrows. Oh, this guy's shy. Yeah, um, because they're so hard Like, what if I need them? But now we're going to be doing the final boss fight. Oh, 2,600, that's pretty good. All right, where are we at? Yeah, at a certain point, you just might as well. Oh, no, that's the other way out. There we go. That gives the Master Sword time to recharge, and Daruk's Protection time to recharge. It's raining for some reason. Running out of time to delay me, but that's okay. Daruk's protection is now ready to roll. Thanks, Daruk. What's in here? Yo, scratch, scratch, scratch. Oh, oh they're so soft and fluffy, Ziggy. Little puff ball, just a covered in guy. so much dust and snuck. Just a little guy. Just a little lady. Just a little creature is, I think, the most accurate description of Ziggy that there is. Pacha! She exists to do oh. mischievous things. I neglected to consider how many things would be trying to shoot me with lasers, but that's okay. Don't We're rub good. your face on the back of the microphone either. That's not. That's also bad. Don't touch the microphone. <laughs> I don't know how to communicate this to you. It is not easy because Ziggy is a cat. That, that took forever. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I got Cleo's lunch, and then I could not find her. Um, oh. It turns out that she was napping inside the uh, the guest bed, uh, which, Red, you are familiar with. I am. Um, she was just kind of nestled up in there. We had uh, a guest over this past weekend, so the bed is currently unmade, and I didn't realize... Whew, a lot of stairs in this house. Until the, uh, <laughs> like the third pass-through, it's like, oh, that lump is Cleo. Wait, hold on, okay. <laughs> I was like, up, down, up, where the hell is she? Oh, found her. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I told her there was food, but she did not follow me. <laughs> That's remarkable to me, because I cannot stand up and move from one of the, like, three rooms in my apartment to the other without Ziggy following and assuming that she knows. <laughs> like, under no circumstances is she ever under the impression that this is not an instance in which we're going to give her food. Alright, let's see. Alright, we're at 2600, which means I don't need to do the Master Trials, which means I get to go deck Ganon! Oh, hold on, the Master Huzzah. Sword. Hold on, just a sec. Master Sword isn't Huzzah. recharged Huzzah. yet. Huzzah. That's not good, actually. That, okay, alright. You All can right. fuck around more. Did you do the thing on top where you look at, uh... Uh, yeah, we, we did climb up Here uh, is... Hyrule Castle, we got the hat, all that stuff. Um, that's... Here's another option. Yes. We deck Ganon the first time, and then for future uh, stretch goals, we just have to deck Ganon, but with more restrictions. <laughs> like... Have to point. use a certain kind of weapon, or have to wear a silly little outfit, you know? <laughs> well, we can certainly do that, but in the meantime, I actually do want to wait for the Master Sword to recharge. So I have about six minutes to kill, uh, climbing up and around, maybe. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's not go in yet. I'm gonna go up and over. <laughs> and not get shot in the process. <laughs> do have a little bit more time to try and stop me. Kill Ganon in the Tingle outfit, for example. Thank you, chat. We need to- um, Ah! Well, shit. Oh, God. What's happening? Hold on. Trouble? No. Game heard me talking smack, that's all. Oh. Die! <laughs> Alright, that wasn't my fault. The game froze. <laughs> That's pretty funny, though. <laughs> yes, we're all having a, a bundle of laughs. I know I am. Yeah. We're good. It's cool. It's fun being on the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I kind of forgot, because it's been a while since I've actually like done the streaming. I forgot how stressful it is for me <laughs> um, and how much I actually really don't like it. <laughs> yes, which is why it works out well that I do enjoy it. You it's funny, like, sometimes I have conversations with, uh, with Adam, Ludo History, and he's like, oh, man, you know, I'm trying to, you know, edit this, this video together, and it's just like, oh, it's not coming together. 
and I'm like, oh man, I'm trying to stream, and it's just like, oh man, I can't do it, and we're both like, okay. We have like the the little c cerebral switch in our brain where one of us can do video editing and the other one can live stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neither of us can do both. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to Mad Anything Laboratory for the 390 euro, I think that's euro, and if it's not, I'm so sorry, donation. Uh, and also Anonymous for the 40 SCK oh, yeah, that's gross. donation. So how are... um, but we have hit, we've passed 3k. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> ah! Do we Fred, want to kill the do... castle Lynels? Oh, well, uh, I already did that. <laughs> want to go, uh, like, go crouch, uh, <laughs> walking around crouching repeatedly in the area where the castle Lynels are? Well, yes, we can go teabag the, uh, the things, but 3k was, we try the master trials again. <laughs> oh, was it? Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> master trial again, chat demand. <laughs> you got it. I have these little, um, they're not Lego, but they are similar connecting bricks of some of the evolutions from Pokemon that a friend mm. gave me for my birthday on top of my focus, right? Because they're nice little desk ornaments. And Ziggy it. is obsessed with knocking them over. Not breaking them, but just pushing them <laughs> off of the focus, right? <laughs> Once they're off, she doesn't care. I'm like, you gotta... It's the power she wields to move things from their appointed location. There's so much space here. You could lay down and have a little nap on the table if you wanted, and it would be fine. <laughs> I forgot Ganondorf is still up by the Elden Skeleton. <laughs> uh, he's fine. Maybe they'll warp him to our location. I, it's kind of a crapshoot which of the if horses you, we're going to get for the... If you uh, go to a stable and just say, say you want to send him in, it'll put him back in the stable and then you can just take him out again. Yeah, I know, but I'm busy. <laughs> I got a deck Ganon. <laughs> Oh, I don't hit the back of the mic. Oh. Okay, she's coming to my lap. This is good. No, going past my lap now. That's good. Did I miss that the sword is called Ganonhorf? No, no, no. The, the horse is, is called Ganonhorf. Oh, sorry, the horse. Yeah. Yeah. We found the big Ganondorf horse in uh, that one area. So we named him Ganonhorf, obviously. Let's go. And now that we've saved, now I will eat my best meal. Oh, <gasps> no. I have to wait anyway. Damn it. Mm, All right, we have rip. three minutes to kill. <laughs> Ugh. Hey, has to. The Ludo narrative dissonance of the Trials of the Sword being harder than the Ganon fight is that it's prep for Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Mm. There's a game theory for you. <laughs> Someone in the comments is asking, like, what's up with that? I'm like, I'm off the top of my head with no prior thought whatsoever. It's prep for Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yeah. What's the deal? Yeah, sure, you can kill the immortal spirit of evil, but can you deal with those fucking Skywatcher guys in the new trailer? <laughs> I can't even deal with the Skywatcher guys in this game. Yeah. Thank you, Hestu. I wonder, can I? Nope. Sorry, Hestu. I just don't have enough <laughs> little Korok boots for you. You win some, you lose some. All right. <sighs> All right, this gives us time to figure out what to do for 4K. <laughs> we gotta incentivize. The donations are important. <gasps> oh my god, are those beetles? No, there's grass on the trees. Damn it, I made this mistake before, too. I don't know why I did that. See, there's just like weird little patches of grass growing on the trees, and every time I see them from a distance, I'm like, beetles! And then they aren't. So. <laughs> if only. If only. A tribute to that guy I was married to in a previous life. <laughs> Let's see. You got anything for me to. Mm. Purchase. Ah. This is definitely a me problem, but does anyone else, like, find it impossible to actually know what the buttons on the, uh, 
the Nintendo Switch controller R, like the face oh buttons, because I'm used to PlayStation the controls. The R versus R is like my nightmare. Yeah, I have oh, to that one, every time. I know they're labeled, but I'm little... not looking at the top of the Switch, goddammit. But the face buttons are completely switched, like the B and the A are backwards for what they are on Xbox. I don't even play mm. Xbox and it still messes me up. Mm. And then there's, of course, there's an X, but PlayStation also has an X, and the X is in the wrong spot for what PlayStation is. So it's it's just, no matter which one you play, the Switch controller is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> also, hold on, there's an ant that I need to kill. Oh, no worries. Have fun. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's do a little Deku tree climbing. Hmm. Howdy, howdy. Excuse me, sir. Just, uh, just gonna leave a little foothold. You know how it is. You know how it goes. Been getting warm in here. The ants have been like, "Ooh, food for me!" Like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> steady. Just whoa! God damn it! Deku tree's mustache geometry won't let me climb it. It's okay. I'll find another way. I always do. Finds a way. I know there's a guy up here. There's, a, there's just a little guy on top of the Deku tree. To be fair, Nintendo did. Yeah, they they came up with the four button scheme first because they <laughs> they were around first. But still. All right, uppies. Yes, yes, I've done it. Oh, let me help. What should we do for 4K? There should be something. I mean, we're gonna deck mm. Ganon at some point, but the point of the donations is to slow that down. The longer we go without ducking Ganon, the funnier it goes. It is. We this is true. Ganon in the stream title, yeah. let's deck Ganon. Oh boy. Hmm. Well, I suppose 4K can have another master trial in the holster. So if and when I die on my next attempt, when I get shot by bombers from every direction, I could always. Like we try again we can just stack master trial attempts. <laughs> oh no, we can't do that. We stacked Lionel killing attempts, and that made the entire stream, hey, let's kill Lionel's because somebody donated $10,000 at once. Wow. Which Hello. is incredibly generous, and we thank them for it. Yes, it was awesome. We love them. But I had to kill so many Lionels. Single-handedly uh, decimating Hyrule's Lionel population. Yeah, but then a Blood Moon happens, so it's all good. Oh god. When it's a Blood Moon, is there a new monster that gets put in place of the old one, or is it the same one that's back? <laughs> you know, I'm inclined to think it's the same one because I've killed the Ploymus Mountain Lionel a few times now, and every time he comes back with, like, stronger weapons, which makes me think he's going through some kind of Lionel training montage mm. in, like, the Lionel Afterlife. I gotta go feed Ziggy. I'll be right back. Sounds good. Come on, cat. Other it's funny that it's, like, Indigo breaks for lunch. Blue breaks for lunch. Ziggy blue breaks, breaks to lunch. feed Ziggy. <laughs> or blue breaks to feed Cleo. Indigo breaks to feed Ziggy. Oh, all right. We don't have a Kakariko Village pumpkin. So we're just going to go do the Master Trials again. I'll be back for you again, and I promise it's happening. Someone asks about the little statues on the column in the uh, armchair room. It's uh, Dante and Virgil. It is Dante and Virgil. Because at the time I started the trope talks, that was the last big thing I'd done, I believe. Yep. And then I think the, the pixel resolution is too small to show it, but a lot of the books actually do have titles. Oh, yeah. Okay. Eh. Whew. The beast is satiated. The beast is satiated. Good. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Master Trials Part 2. Master Trials, but again. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I talked too much smack. All right, hold on. Let me down. <laughs> no. 
shit. Oh, I didn't get the bow. That's fine. First one's not so bad. First one's free. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do we got here? Oh. Oh, the bomb arrow blew up one of the boxes. That's fun. Oh. Well, I didn't retrieve either of their bows, so I can't use any of these arrows, but it's good that I have them. All's well, it ends well. I don't know if the bows are somehow floating up there, are they? That would be too easy, I guess. Oh, well, let's take a little look around. Let's take a look-see. A gander, as it were. A little peek. Ooh. There's an arrow just floating. I'll take that, thank you. Honestly, like, the reason that they get rid of all your armor is so that you don't have the extra defense bonus, but, like, I wish they gave you a shirt and pants. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird that the sages or whoever that the monks are like all right now in order to beat this trial and unlock the full power of the master sword you need to drop trow boy <laughs> it's like weird and building, wrong you know confidence um this is a titties to... out kind of divine challenge gotta have no shame they just gave him like pants <laughs> i think you do get pants later no, oh, okay, okay. Prove thyself worthy and have pants. I saw I saw Point Crow do this once, and uh, I believe you start getting pants because they start being like environmental hazards. Oop! What was that? Oh, okay. Ah. All right. Give me the mushroom. Give me the mushroom. Give me the mushroom. Mushy giant friend. Ah! Overshot it. All right, we're good. And let's get whatever's in there. It's going up. <laughs> the monks are in league with Robbie. Hilarious. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Buddy. Got it in one. Oh no, it wasn't high enough. Okay, fine. Take two. Okay. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You gotta just believe in yourself. No! Damn it! <laughs> I think I needed to get you a bow. Didn't believe hard enough. I oh. <laughs> I think I needed a bow to be able to shoot a fire arrow at those. Can you try a circle bomb? Chat uh, says they're lighter. Really? Well, uh, yeah. I can try that once I get this thing first. Um, buddy. Oh, yeah. Aha! A bow! How generous. <laughs> Alright. Oh, no. God, the let's not take any fall damage. Samba is so stressful. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Oh! No! Chat, once again you misled me. I trusted you on this the day of my daughter's wedding. Alright, let's just get out of here. The sooner I die, the sooner I can get back to decking Ganon. As highly intended. As far as I can tell, 
you stun this thing, it just falls, and then he just immediately dies. Hmm. Just pretty efficient. I guess that works as well as anything. Yeah, I guess. Alright, where's the next one? Doesn't mean I don't get the fire rod, but... Meh. Oh, what a friendly fella. What a stand-up little guy. Great, he's dead. Awesome. I can get that. I can get the bow. We're fine. It's cool. No. <laughs> All right. All right almost. We got it. Okay. This is working. This is working all right. Oh, we hit the kill floor. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, I think the whiz rope's stun after only one arrow, so... All right, we can be more efficient with this. Assuming I don't die this time. <laughs> Killing a wave in whiz rope. Feel so dirty? No, it doesn't. I feel no sympathy for whiz robes. They are so annoying and I hate them. <laughs> what the? Oh, I skipped some kind of intro scene. Hmm. What the hell? Wait, what? Wait. Where am I getting shot at from? Anyone's guess? You sense nothing. I am not here. Go away. What? Excuse you! <laughs> ah! Oh my god! <laughs> ah! We're good. My favorite thing about Twilight Princess is they went out of their way to make all the bosses absolute nightmare futile. There's yeah. the giant underwater snake monster, ginormous spider. Ah! The dragon's just sick as hell. Um, and, uh, those are the big ones, uh, but they are terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. I assume. Oh, the, uh, the, the bone dragon in the, um, uh, the bone dragon in the Arbiter's Grounds is, uh, pretty awesome, but, uh, pretty horrifying as we well. I do love the bone dragon. Who doesn't love the bone dragon? There's also that cursed sword thingy you have to fight at some point. Always Death fun. Sword. Death God, sword. Death Sword's cool. It One of my like favorite Zelda videos as well. Stuff, Tears of the Kingdom is gonna have more like. Oh, there's a know, guy up there. The right word, but like more distinct bosses than Breath of the Wild has. Yeah, oh more my God! bosses. Because yeah. like in Breath of the Wild, we've got the Mulduga, Talus, yeah. the well, Hinox, and the Lynels. Aside from the like, I guess count, but yeah. All right, I'm curious. Like I would consider those kind of like mini bosses, but they're not <gasps> like. Each one is very distinct, you know, it's kind of like this is the same thing but in different settings. But I feel like the trailers look like they're gonna have like unique more unique overworld bosses that you might just encounter. Which is yeah. a cool I'm excited to get that. Yeah, I'm I'm super that. hyped. Oh! I, I <laughs> love I love the look of the Gliok. I, I don't wanna get too far into Tears of the Kingdom stuff because I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna um uh speculate too much for Oh no! Oh my god. Yeah, right? <laughs> I got sniped. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that was oh, that was dirty. But it is good to know that if I just fall off the side, I don't immediately die. So so falling is not an instant death condition. Unless I've That's also good. died. Huh. Alright. Well, you know the drill, folks. 4K <laughs> and I take another stab at it. Uh, Unless Red can somehow get to Ganon first. Unless I can somehow get- and I'm not- I'm not gonna- You know what? To make the game fair, I'm not just gonna warp to the shrine that I already have gotten inside Hyrule Castle. We're gonna start from the central tower and make our way. Oh! There's, I have a little leaf man. She may not always be an ethical person, but she is fair. <laughs> what have I done that's unethical? 
No, from House of Gucci. Lady oh. Gaga. Oh. Lady Gaga. I have not watched House of Gucci. I haven't either, but I've seen that goddamn clip so many times. I have been eating a stat boost in uh, food just before I pulled the sword. Well, I did that the first time I tried. Not so. Anyway. All right, Ganon. <laughs> this time, no distractions. I don't know where I've said this before, but I love that Lady Gaga was like, yeah, I'm basically the biggest pop star on planet Earth. I'm going to go sing jazz with Tony Bennett. Cool, I sing jazz with Tony Bennett. I'm going to go act in movies now. It's just, she's like, everything she does, she wins. She's it's amazing. Thriving. She's just that good. <laughs> All right, back to business. Gatehouse is cleared. Things exploded. Assorted guardians murdered. What have I done that's unethical? Satori Mountain. Hey! <laughs> hey. Oh yeah, remember when we hey. killed a god? Just because I taught the Lord of the Mountain the glorious skill of horse tilt doesn't mean I did the wrong thing. Excuse me. He just needed to get good. He just needed to get good and everything would have been fine. Oh, why, hello there, sirs. <laughs> Excuse me. Have you heard the good word of our... Whoops. There we go. Someone Aww. donated five dollars and said to save Ganon. It's all <laughs> thanks, man. It's only updated. <laughs> it's its base attack is forty, but its upgraded attack is still only sixty. It hasn't upgraded. Well, that's um. I think the way that it uh. What a rip. I think the way it works is that as you complete each of the phases, you increase its base attack until it's always the upgraded amount. So you never increase the upgraded amount. Yeah. That's. That makes it even less worth it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like how on the one side of the Master Trials, you have... Oh, sorry, on the one side of the DLC, you have the Champion's Ballad. A masterfully crafted ride designed to give more characterization to the characters that have been dead from the beginning, your lost friends and allies. And then you have the Master Trials, which gives you a brick wall and invites you to hit your head against it until something breaks. <laughs> Probably you. Probably me. The duality of DLC. You dead yet? God, you are so annoying. That's cheating, and you know it. But that's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, what did Ganon ever really do to us? I mean, recently. <laughs> <laughs> it has been a hundred years since his last big atrocity. And he makes a lot of really good points. <laughs> and, you know, we, we really can't hold him accountable for the actions of his followers, the Moblins, Bacoblins, etc. Did I get him? Oh, no, I need to hit him in the exposed eyeball part. That's okay. Oh, wait. No, I don't. What am I doing? Excuse me. A message for you, sir. Why is that not working? All right, whatever. I love an interpretation of a Zelda game where instead of Ganon being like, you know, I'm going to be the, or instead of Ganondorf being like, I'm going to become the king of Hyrule, Ganondorf is like, hey, like monarchy? Kind of cringe, really bad way to run a nation by like concentrating immense power and wealth in a single bloodline that's <laughs> like implicitly a little racist and it, it, at least extremely classist. So like, let's, let's just not do that. Like at least an oligarchy, maybe a representative Republic if we're feeling bold enough. It's just like, he's like a political reformist rather than a usurping King. I love that interpretation of Ganon. Your fave is problematic. King Rome, Bosphoramus, <laughs> Hyrule. <laughs> King Rome, Bosphoramus, Hyrule is no one's fave. Damn right. Like we get into the castle and Ganon's like, really Link? You want to avenge the dead? Like, I mean, sure, like, you can have Zelda back, whatever, but, like, I I wanted the same thing you wanted, Rome dead. Well, you're joking, but there are a lot of very optimistic people on Tumblr who are holding out hope for actually good guy Ganondorf in uh, Tears of the Kingdom and that the true enemy will be Demise and you can actually hang out with Ganon and be his friend. And a lot of the then logic Let's is... go no further than that because I don't want to tempt any... Uh... Any uh, spoilers? Leaks, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, good point. I just like Hilarious, that a lot of the though. logic behind it is like, he's not dressed like a bad guy, and it's like, <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> what? Can't be bad. 
He's hot. He's, he's got his nips out. <laughs> Only good guys are allowed to show those. <laughs> Crop tops are for heroes only. Thank you very much. Crop top is a Although I think phrase. all of the Final Fantasy early game character design would disagree with that thesis. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tumblr is like, is this hero presenting or villain presenting <laughs> nipples? <laughs> I mean, for ages and ages, the uh, running theme was that only villains were allowed to be sluts, and uh, good guys had to be chaste and good and god damn it. Yep. yep. <laughs> And that's why <laughs> all the heroes are everyone's slutty little fave now. <laughs> Alright, how about I just how about I just hide from you as well? You're gonna forget I exist? Oh hold on. We just we just we just we just blank. Now's not the time to be fucking around. Alright, it worked. Good. Alright, you done, my man? Yeah, you know what? I think in order to make this fun. No, I'm not gonna lock myself into the rules of having to use the fucking roads. What am I doing? <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. All roads lead to Rome. <laughs> Come on. Get out of your system, big man. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Anyway, as I was saying... Whoops! <laughs> oh, I see. Whoops! I keep forgetting the beam travels at a weird... Great if you're far enough away so the parry window changes. That's okay. Real quick, while we're talking about like heroes being allowed to to Be bang, yeah. I think yeah. Um in the the matrix of knows what sex is, doesn't know what sex is, fucks does not fuck. I think and Ed stop me if I'm off base here, but um Daruk does not know what sex is, but fucks. Daruk has a family. Mipha, yeah. Uh, Mifa knows what sex is, but does, does not, not fuck. fuck. Yes. Urbosa knows what sex is and fucks, oh, possibly yeah. even the queen, depending on how we interpret some of that uh, that dialogue. And Rivali knows what sex is, but does not fuck. Wait, hold on. We, we have... No, that's Mifa. Mifa knows what sex is, but does not fuck. We already covered that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, never mind. Uh, then Rivali does not know what sex is and, and doesn't does fuck. Not fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right to me. Dichotomy of heroes. We read through Rivali's diary and it's so funny. It's so, it just reads like. Wait, he has a diary? He has a diary. A the Champions Palette DLC adds diaries for all four champions. Oh my god. We've already Rivali's done it on A stream, but maybe if favorite. we hit like 4K, we'll, we'll also go back and reread. <laughs> yeah, that's the 4K. We go read the champion diaries. Again? The thing is, we've already done them on stream oh. before. Maybe but... we reread just Rivali's. That's what I was that's thinking. that's really the only one uh, presents any sort Fair of... Enough. Fair enough. It's solid gold. He has, like... They all sort of mention something about Link that, like, oh, yeah, I ran into him, he's cool. Or, like, Daruk's like, yeah, we're bros, it's great. Um, Rivali recounts his side of the story for Link's flashback to him of him being like, oh, there's no way of making divinities uh, on your own, yada yada. Etc. Etc. And like his version is so goddamn funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's literally like, why won't he pay attention to me? <laughs> I passed him a note saying, "Get out, out of my castle," and he he just ignored me. <laughs> oh oh oh! Gavali's gale is now ready. I think it's funnier if we imagine that Rivali once knew what sex was, but became so blinded by rage <laughs> that he just forgot. <laughs> oh, you know what? It was never a priority. <laughs> oh. That was I... the same spot your game froze as last time. It was, yeah. I think that must be some kind of like little place that renders in a bunch of stuff. All right, we're good. We're good. Great. We got the Master Sword. We've got all our stuff. And. We are not yet at any sort of donation threshold. So, in you go. Let's fucking go, guys. Let's do it. <laughs> Rivali couldn't have sex because he'd have to lose his virginity, and Rivali doesn't Never lose. lose. <laughs> ah, the same logic as Seto Kaiba. I must Thank you, oh the great God. Rasputin. <gasps> I have excellent news. What? You'll see in a second. No, wait, no. Oh, you can ride the motorcycle. How dare they? 
impede me with an invisible wall. Ah, <laughs> uh, Ganon, you, you, you've hurt me for the last time. I know you're in here, you big fucking nerd. Where's my goddamn money? Ah, uh, yes, the Dracula approach. <laughs> Come on. Hey, remember when I dropped a bomb on you last time? I do. That latte better still be hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but my power isn't strong enough. Hold that thought. I might need to do the master trials again. <laughs> oh, whoa. Oh, how embarrassing. Welcome to Hyrule, home of challenge pissing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, is it big get? It's Hyrule. You're fucked six ways from Sunday. <laughs> Will fuck her. That's right. Will fuck your wife. <laughs> oh, he's so nasty. Oh, he's gross. You could have looked like anything, and you chose this. <laughs> Yucky. I honestly really like the Calamity Ganon design from Hyrule Warriors. You know he's Ganon because he got a four jewel. And a big hair. Alright guys, anytime you want to use them Divine Beasts! <laughs> now would be great! There he is. Yeah! Pew! My boy, Birdman. Fuck him up, girls! Let's go, girls. Let's go, Luca! Yeah! For my super laser pass! Alright, anyway. God, I love the laser effects. I They're so too. cool. How the center of the beam is just black. Anything where, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Because in Hyrule Castle, you're lasered six ways from Sunday. <laughs> I think you might want to back up a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they did such a good job with this whole cutscene. Get fucked! When they do have cutscenes in Breath of the Wild, they're all really solid. Yeah. Like... I think we got him, boys! Great. He's behind an obscuring dust cloud. He must be dead. Surely this means he's patched. This is only right and good. Ugh. Let's fuck him up. I did the whole Master Trials and it didn't even help. I did the whole Master Trials and all I got was this t-shirt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> protection is putting in the fucking work for me today. Oh, hold on. Let me just, uh, let me just, let me just... It's the final boss fight. You know, we can, we can... Go all out a little bit? Just a little bit, just a little. We can have a little bit of all out as a treat. Alright, I gotta... Oop, that hurt. Oh my god, that does so much! Wait, what? Those arrows are insane. Oh, frick, that's right. I don't necessarily remember how to do with this part. Oh, uh, you just gotta parry. Oh. Yeah, if it gets up on the wall, you just have to parry the beam. Roger that. Or you can try to, um, blurry rush the slice. Yeah, the first time I played this, uh, I didn't know how to parry. I just hadn't been doing it all playthrough, and, um, it made this final encounter kind of difficult. Come on, <laughs> I was like, yeah. wait, how do I- I do what now? I'm supposed to be- I'm supposed to have been okay. parrying this? Alright. I don't know the timing. Oh, 
Oh, he's just using attacks from the lights. That's fun. Come on. Oh, sub design doc. Welcome in. Hello. Okay. Oh, I kind of hope your Rose's Fury would work. Ha! Oh no! I also got knocked out for some reason. That's okay. <laughs> more of Osis Furies in me. Ah, ah, even you, yeah. dodge, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Hold on. Now. Before he gets the shield back up! Shit. Okay, that's fine. Ah, okay, fine. We'll try repairing this one. Nope. Come on. Get out of your system. Yes! On. Oh my god, he has one more! Crap, okay, it's okay. Ah, oh, you coward, come back down here and face me. <laughs> Two and three quarter hearts in, the ra hearts in the rage of God in my heart. Oh, oh thanks to Rook's protection! That felt a little unearned. The work. Oh, God. oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Daruk, uh, kill sniped. The real MVP, carrying this team. Aw, oh, somebody upset. Someone mad he didn't make his incarnation symmetrical. Aw, poor guy. Oh, he's got like lino horns on his back. God, he's a nightmare. I think we got it, boys. I didn't try to summon the motorcycle! No! Well, we can always redo the fight. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Zelda. Getting a lift out of here would have been annoying. <gasps> yes! Ganondorf is here! <laughs> Ganondorf is here to defeat the King of Evil! Ganon. Ganon was born out of a dark past. He is a pure embodiment of the ancient evil that is reborn time and time again. Legally obligated to turn into a giant pig at least once per game. <laughs> Is that my fucking horse? <laughs> Come on, Ganon Horf. Let's show him who the real Ganon is. I entrust you with the bow of light, a powerful weapon in the face of evil. Wow, faces of evil. I remember that game. You may not yet be at a point where you have fully recovered your power. I would not worry about that, Zelda. <laughs> do you not have all the memories in these playthrough? I do. She says the same thing every time. Gotcha. But she doesn't know that. As far as she's concerned, she's just seen me kind of going. Uh huh. Okay. That's kind of nicer than my current bow, I guess. Just give me the things I can shoot, please. I will hold the malice back as much as I can, but my power is waning. Attack any glowing points that you see. Thanks, girl. Will do. May you be victorious. Fingies crossed. Would have been cool if Dark Beast was, like, running across Hyrule Field rather than <laughs> just stuck in place, but I'm sure there was some kind of, like, budget or design oh, constraints to this. Because if it was a chase, that would have been really cool. Would have been pretty cool. 
Whoops. Oh, the ball of light just goes in a straight line, it looks like. Ganon Horf, maybe get us a little closer. Whoops, <laughs> valiant effort, Ganon Horf. He's doing his best, not steering him right. He is simply trying, and that is all we can ask. Whoa! Whoa! A little close, a little close! Thanks, girl. Anytime. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I should be doing this. Rotating man. <laughs> All right, Zelda. Oh, hold on. How about a miss? Oh, I see. He moving. Unfair. He zoomed in. This feels like my fault at this point. There it is, jeez. <laughs> Ganonhorf, where are you? Ah, thank you. Excellent work, my man. Ah, sorry, Ganonhorf. Don't panic. We're good. Just got to avoid the death laser. hard because you can't seem to hit the broad side of Hyrule Castle with it. Ha ha ha. Oh, we got him. That second one was just for flavor. <laughs> just for spice. I'm working on it, Zelda. Oh, he's so yucky. Look up where? I like that now it gives us the, the red sky kind of blood moon effect. A little bit weird that they didn't do that before. It's lack of that in the rest of the game. Oh my. <laughs> you know it, girl. I'm on it. Come on, shoot a laser. Give me an updraft. All right, Ganonhorf, you get out of the way. <laughs> but I, I know what I must do. Ascend, Red. <laughs> Did I get him? No! <laughs> no! You cheating bastard! Open that eyeball up right now! Or so help me. Damn it! How could I miss? He was three feet from me! Once Girl, more, I am I trying. <laughs> Alright, you... Come on! Yeah! Jeez, okay. <sighs> there she is! Our girl! Oh shit. Woo. He looks worried. We can. See, the Calamity is a living nightmare, but when he makes the giant pig, he makes sure the giant pig is buff. The Zelda looks so over it. Zelda is <laughs> just wants a nap, a nice hot meal, and to never look at a pig for the rest of her life. Zelda wants what we in the industry call a fucking break. <laughs> uh, 
I love that spectral like flying Ganon thing that one. we see here in the very beginning. Yeah. see him again. Good work, Link. I really feel like that was a team effort. <laughs> Zelda just wants to play Fortnite and have a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> <laughs> over you all this time I've witnessed your struggles to return to us as well as your trials in battle I always thought no I always believed that you would find a way to defeat Ganon I never yeah I just hit him a bunch and it kind of worked after all thank you the hero of Hero of the wild, bro. May I ask? Do you really remember me? <laughs> if Link could change his expression, I'm sure he would, but you know how he is. Yay! Woo! All right, we're gonna get that true ending cutscene any second now. <laughs> no, we are. We got. I all wish memories. Link did anything in that cutscene besides just stand there. Really doesn't sell uh, the idea that he's more than just like <laughs> a, a vessel for violence. <laughs> hey, Link's love language is acts of service, not you know love language. Yeah, fair enough. It's like, yeah, I just killed Ganon for you. I'm sorry I didn't smile when I did it. I mean, he doesn't need to smile. He just needs to not, like, stand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really remember me? <laughs> because what it, it looks like he didn't even understand what she just said. <laughs> that blank expressionless stare. It really is you. <laughs> <laughs> like, if he took out a turkey leg and just started eating it, I believe that he was <laughs> participating in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. Link has emoted in his, like, memories a little bit, but... He's very subdued, even when he is in, you know, moments of crisis and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, a nod would have been enough, exactly. Like, literally anything. <laughs> uh, to be fair, if he just nodded in response to that, I'm not sure I'd have believed him. <laughs> just like, of course I remember you. Y you. Glowing it would at least convey lady. that there was a thought in his mind. <laughs> I think if he'd taken a step towards her, I would have appreciated it. Like, I don't yeah. think I need to see him nod, but just like, all right, let's maintain a healthy 10-foot distance. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll honestly take whatever I can get in this scenario. Well, what we're gonna get is Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. like, gosh, I just don't know if Link really cares about Zelda. He only flung himself into a pit after her with his arm burned to hell and, you know, all this other shit happening. No, I just don't know if he likes her, you know. I like this little credit sequence, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> God damn it. I know that's that joke's been made before, but God, thank you to the person in the comments who posted it. This is why we shouldn't let Link talk. Whenever Link talks, it's bad. <laughs> I saw a post on Tumblr where people were like it was like a shipping argument initially it's like mm -hmm. arguing about whether Link likes Zelda or, or, or Mipha based on like his expression when he deals with either of them and it's like it's the same expression yeah <laughs> it's his same generic stoic handsomeness he always has you want to tell me Link loves somebody show me the way he looks at food <laughs> yeah I don't want to skip the credits, and it's not going to give me the option, but I really want to see the true ending cutscene that I got all the memories to earn. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Which silent protagonist that got done dirtier by voice acting Linker Samus? That's a hard <laughs> one. <laughs> I have no idea what Samus sounds like, so I... Well, I think it's Other M say. where they voice her, and she just spends the entire game being like, The baby. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Weird. Like, what should we do with this badass protagonist who we revealed at the end of the game was a, was a lady? Well, we really gotta lean in on the lady thing. What are, what are girls like? Um, babies, right? Yeah, okay. So she's gonna adopt a baby Metroid and constantly talk about it, I guess. In a ship called Baby Bottle. With a, with a distress signal we call the baby's cry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get it yet? Bosa's theme. Yeah, it's good. Ah, what a good game. Yeah. I am excited for Tears of the Kingdom. They should make another one or something. <laughs> <laughs> it is really cool to think that Legend of Zelda has never been more popular than it is right now. Yeah. And we all get to be here for it. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, obviously, there have been times where Legend of Zelda was more foundational to what every other game would look like. You know, Ocarina of Time, you know, basically not inventing, but, like, establishing, here's how you make a 3D game, Sonic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool to think that, like, in terms of, like, I think sales, most likely, and just general, like, internet prevalence in the culture, it has rarely, if ever, been more popular and and universally beloved than it is right now and that yeah. is pretty damn cool it is and it's it's interesting i mean breath of the wild is so different from every previous zelda game um in terms yeah. of the mechanics like obviously the story is very similar if you boil it down to the base format it's like all right zelda's in distress because of ganon um you need to work your way up to a boss fight in hyrule castle there are dungeons there are micro dungeons there are overworld bosses etc etc but like Every Zelda game before this was basically a straight line, you know? You couldn't really do the plot in a different order. Like, you could do a little bit of overworld travel. You know, Hyrule Field was usually where they hid the overworld stuff. Um, and there'd be collectibles that you could get in any order. Yeah, the, the dungeons the plot, were kind of wonky and non-linear, and that was a lot of the challenge. But the story progression is like, yeah. you, can't, <laughs> you can't do the Fire Temple before the Deku Tree, you know? You can't do... Um, uh, you can't go to the castle before you've done all the other dungeons and they give you mm -hmm. these tools to do each individual dungeon gimmicks that they were designed around but often the tools wouldn't have overworld applications so like the spinner in uh twilight princess is super fun it's a fucking beyblade you get to ride around on and you only use it in i think the arbiter's ground dungeon um and then there's just no use for it ever again you can't even really use it for like skateboarding so and i mean the amount of work they had to do to make breath of the wild like they clearly had to kind of reevaluate all their design considerations from the ground up in order to have like mm -hmm. yeah yeah and they did a good job they they cracked the formula for you know the right balance of overworld stuff to do versus difficulty doing it um i mean i've i've complained about how after a certain point the game gets quite easy um like it's fun it's it's continues to be fun and there continue to be challenges but once you have enough hearts to tank things and you have enough, like, armor to knock damage down, it's just kind of a waiting game. <laughs> um, and I'm hoping that Tears of the Kingdom will have a lot more, I guess, of a challenge curve, so you're working your way up to greater heights than you do in this game, uh, because mm -hmm. the things you're doing are more difficult. Which seems to be what they're doing, like, just from, the, just from what we've seen Hopefully. from the trailers. None of us have engaged with any of the leaks, no, and we won't. We're not. And gonna. if anyone posts, you're gonna get banned. Yes, but um, it's uh, I don't know. It's just interesting that they they took a big risk. I'm like, hey, Zelda, most famously linear game franchise. We're gonna take that and we're gonna turn it into an epic, sweeping overworld adventure, and we are going to give you the option to go straight to the final boss if you so desire. Good luck. Like, it's the harder approach to game design. And it worked. And it, you can tell it worked because of how many people tried, you know, copying it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and it took a couple years before they could put out, um, you know, follow-up games that were mimicking it because yeah. it, it was so much work. It really took until Elden Ring before anyone actually 
got it to work. Mm. And even then, I've heard. Oh, hold on. Hmm? We got it. I think I think we're through the credits. Yes. Uh-huh. Let's go. Nice. Yeah. Shout out to Link Between Worlds having some some variability. Anyway. <laughs> Boo! Boo! All right, everyone else is fine. (laughs) I think those are silent princess petals. That's cute. Oh, and the Guardian Towers are blue now, obviously. The things I didn't notice the first time this happened. All right, give me the post-end cutscene. Give it to me. <laughs> I got all the she memories. Let her see the thing. <laughs> yes. Yes! It's happening. We'll make our way to Zora's domain. Divine Beast Barucha. Looks like it stopped working. Let's investigate the situation. Mika's father. I believe you would like to hear more about her. The least we can do is visit him and offer him some closure. Mm. Although Ganon is gone for now, there is still so much more for us to do. In some sort of and sequel, so perhaps. painful memories that we must bear. <laughs> I believe in my heart that if all of us work together, we can restore Hyrule to its former glory. Perhaps even beyond, but it all must start with us. Let's be off. <laughs> I can no longer hear the voice inside the sword. I suppose it would make sense if my power had dwindled over the past 100 years. I'm surprised to admit it, but I can accept that. Doing okay there, Red? I'm good. I just like this game a lot. <laughs> Look at all the silent princesses! Ah! Do you get the symbolism? I think I got it. See, and then Link runs in. It's very sweet. See? Yeah. Woo! All right. I don't know what screen it's about to kick me to. Let's find out. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Link getting blasted by guardians. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. All righty. Well. I mean, that was the that was the purpose of the stream. <laughs> um, and we haven't. <laughs> now, have you heard about set bonuses, Link? <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, man. Yeah, I think... Um, I'll be honest, like, we talked about, like, oh, maybe we could go back and deck Ganon again. I think, I think, you know, stream for about three hours. Pretty short by Zelda stream standards, but... We can be good. <laughs> we can be good. I yeah. think we can be good. Um, this is a, a, a wholesome ending to our adventure. Yeah. If we have any closing thoughts, perhaps. We could just chat while it cycles through all these beautiful pieces of art. Yeah. <laughs> a little impromptu podcast sesh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, guys, I'm not fucking playing it in master mode again. I, oh, my God. I enjoy no. it when the game... Look, the problem with the difficulty curve in this game is that it starts out quite difficult, and then it becomes quite easy, which means if you do master mode, it starts off impossible and becomes hard. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> that is a struggle. I, yeah. un, 
uncontroversial opinion, I really fucking like this game. <laughs> I, I think what's astounding is that not only is it fun and you can explore and yada yada yada, but they managed to make one of the most compelling versions of the Link and Zelda relationship mm. with a very limited amount of screen time compared to what you sometimes get in other games. I know we've joked like, you know, Twilight Princess Zelda is like one of the coolest Zeldas we've ever gotten, but she's on screen for like fully five minutes. And let's be it's real, like, ah, she doesn't fine. have a relationship with Link. She has a complex relationship with Midna and yes. Link is also <laughs> there. <laughs> yes, but I, I'm i really impressed by what they're able to do with the relationship in this one and, and obviously all the things that that sets up for, 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 for Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah. Um, later on is, is going to be interesting to explore, but it really did not take a lot. Just the way they structured the game. I've already talked about this. Like you went collecting earrings because you think, you know, you'd want to give them to Zelda when she yeah. gets out. It's like the game makes you think that way. You really want to save this Zelda. Yeah. The first time I played this well. game, um, I was torn between how much fun I was having and how invested I was in saving Zelda as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I actually went in I'm pretty sure I got the... I might have gotten the Master Sword on the first run. I think that's what I did. But um, I kind of sped to the castle. Um, I didn't even have a good shield in the end. It actually broke when I was doing the final fight, so I, mm. I did a lot of dodging <laughs> instead of parrying. Um, <clears throat> and um, But I remember catching myself. Uh, the, the anecdote you just referenced was um, I was in Gerudo Town, and I was just sort of getting you know upgraded gear, and I was like, well, I don't, you know, I don't really like the topaz earrings effect, but maybe Zelda will like them after I save her. And I was <laughs> like, what the fuck is happening to me? Because <laughs> um, I know there's no post game in this game. I know you don't get to run around with Zelda because that's what Tears of the Kingdom is going to be, which I feel like probably started off as some kind of DLC to produce a post game. Like it, it did. Zelda. Um, yeah. That was one of the, the reasons that. <laughs> For a while, we speculated about playable Zelda because it was like they said it started off as a DLC, but we just kept carving more and more off of it until we realized that we had a whole game's worth of stuff to work for. Mm. Yeah, and it because I think the core idea was Sky Islands, and they're like, "Oh wait, no, there's a game here." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I think you know the way that the game is laid out, it's like you are encouraged at every point, like you should do the Divine Beasts, you should recover your memories. Um, you know, do them in whatever order works. Uh, the game sort of gently guides you towards those things. You don't have to, um, but you sort of start wanting to because each memory is this weird little vignette completely out of context and usually out of order. Um, because one of the earliest memories you could get is in Hyrule Castle, which is probably not the first place you go. Uh, so you just get all these weird out of order looks at Zelda. And of course... The first bit of mystery is when you wake up, Zelda talks to you and says, you know, you have to save me and Hyrule, et cetera, et cetera. And you're like, all right, yep, I'm Link, I'm saving Zelda. Makes sense. And then you get a random flashback and there's about 50-50 odds that it's a flashback where Zelda hates you. And it's yeah. like, wait, what? And and it's like, well, shit, I guess I don't know, like, what, what kind of life she had, uh, you know, what our relationship was, what's going on. And then, you know as you start doing the Divine Beast, you get a memory about each champion. It's like, oh, this guy's cool. This guy's got a huge crush on me and doesn't know how to process it. You know, this lady's awesome, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's just little slices. And and they make you want to know more because each of them is referencing things or or is notably different from another memory in a way that makes you wonder what happened. Uh, and the big mystery of like, wait, does Zelda not like me? Is like a big one. <laughs> uh, and it's like, and why does Zelda not like me? What order should these memories be in? Um... And I think they're not expecting you to go to the Gerudo Desert early, which means you don't get the memory where Link saves Zelda from the Iga clan until later in mm -hmm. the game, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit of like, oh, okay, I see. So she didn't like us, and then we saved her, and now we're good. Okay, cool, I get it. But, but the way it's formatted, the way that they're willing to not give you the full story is just yeah. very, very cool to me. Um, I, I also, now that you've literally just mentioned it, the idea that eventually it becomes a reveal that the reason Zelda actually starts to to care for Link is when Link saves her. It becomes like a, a mirroring of we now, the whole point of this game is that we are saving Zelda. It's it's a mirror of the reason that she first started to, to love Link in the very first place. Yeah. 
it's kind of a, a, a larger parallel out from that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting that basically the, the way that the game sort of guides you, you are initially encouraged to go to Zora's Domain, which means basically the first thing you encounter is Sidon, and then everyone's talking about Mipha, and everyone's talking about how you failed Mipha, and you're like, who is Mipha? I don't understand this. And then you get the memory, and you're like, oh no, Mipha was like my future wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's when the impact of this order starts hitting you. You start getting invested in the champions. Because let's be real, Rivali would be a bit of a hard sell for the first person you talk to. Um, yeah. <laughs> and Urbosa is in a hard-to-get-to part of the map, and so is Daruk. But Mipha is right there, and she's the one that cares about you the most. And that kind of starts making you realize how much you lost in the process of waking up as a standard-issue amnesiac protagonist. Um and it's just a very clever bit of design to make you want to know more about yourself and these characters. Because these people feel like complete characters. They feel like people that had lives and you want to know more about them. Um, and that's just really good character writing on the part of yeah. the, the game developers to basically make these people feel like more than just your, you know, your dead friends that will give you a power up and then vanish. Uh, yeah. I think they're, the champions managed to strike the balance of being deep but not at any point overly complicated mm, it's true yeah they are pretty simple the relationships concepts. are always clear but there's clearly a lot behind all of it yeah and they all have a really solid reason to be participating in the plot which is of course kind of a classic challenge when you have an ensemble cast like why are all these people here besides i want yeah. them to be and it's like well herbosa is you know queen etc cetera, etc cetera. she has the personal reason of you know, legend says that Ganon once incarnated in the form of a Gerudo, so this is personal, but also Zelda absolutely needs somebody in her fucking corner, uh, so that's gonna be me. So she's in it for Zelda, and Daruk is simple, but Daruk is just a genuinely good dude, who's like, yeah, I'll help out, we're gonna save Hyrule, okay, I would love to do that, I'm a genuinely good guy without much else going on. Um, and Mifa is super in love with Link, and also generally wants to help, you know, the people of Zora's domain and, and set a good example and be a good princess. So she's in it kind of for the self-actualization. I mean, Mipha and Zelda, <laughs> detail diatribe redux, Mipha and Zelda being basically two different flavors of the same tragic character, but only Zelda gets the happy ending. There's mm. something really heartbreaking there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it's, oh yeah, they're both princesses. They both have this rare magic of Mipha can access it and has been able to for years and years. Zelda cannot and doesn't enjoy this very much. Uh, they both have a strong connection with the same dude. Um, and the thing is, everyone in Breath of the Wild is genre savvy about the genre of games they're in. They all know, oh yes, we know how this story goes. Ganon arises, the hero and the princess defeat him. This happens every time. So you get these four people who show up knowing that they aren't the hero of this story. And they're like, we'll yeah. still help out. And then they all die. And they're like, well, fuck. I mean, I guess we probably could have seen that coming. <laughs> Um, and I just love that there's a, there was a bit, I don't, I don't remember if either of you were on stream at the time when we got through, um, Varuda and we went back and we talked to King Dorafan after the whole huzzah, you know, three cheers for Link thing. And King Dorafan is like, so did, did you find Mipha in the divine beast? And we're like, oh no. Uh, well, I talked to her spirit and he's like, ah, yeah, I guess that, I guess, you know. I guess we feared the worst, but it's still sad to know that it was true. And it's like, it's this moment of fridge horror because Zora lived that long. She could conceivably have just been imprisoned in the Divine Beast. Yep. Like Zelda was imprisoned in Hyrule mm -hmm. Castle in Magic Stasis. And if it had been Mipha's story, that's how it would have gone. But it wasn't that story. And it's, from a meta-narrative standpoint, it's deeply heartbreaking that, that Mipha is not the right princess to survive this story. And everybody no. knows it. I completely zoned out. What are we talking about? Sad champion uh, the, feelings. The immense mm. tragedy of Mifa's story. Yeah. Oh, cool. So the usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can also talk about the other champions. I just think that uh, the parallels between... I mean, there are parallels between a lot of the champions and the characters. So so Mifa and Zelda parallel each other. But a uh, few people have pointed out that Rivali and Link are parallels. In that, like, you know, mm. humble beginnings, uh, ascend through the ranks through sheer natural talent but one of them is the chosen one and the other one isn't. And that's the yeah. only difference. Um, I mean, also yeah. like from a Doyle standpoint, 
only one of those sets of characters are pretty elf people and thus worthy of being main protagonists. But like, <laughs> you know, nobody in the universe knows that. So, <laughs> oh yeah. boy. But yeah, it's a, it's a good game. And it's the core, <laughs> they didn't need to do a huge amount of writing to make this work because no. No. the plot of this game is not linear, you know. They have to do all the work in Twilight Princess to like map out the dungeons and also the the bad guy reveals and the et cetera et cetera and the secret behind the scenes villain who's definitely not Ganon we swear this time for real <laughs> somebody else some some other guy um, but in this one it's just like look we'll just we'll write the pieces of the story we'll leave them scattered around random documents and audio log style and then they'll just piece the story together themselves as they play which also. This feels like the first game that got that format right in a way that I liked. Hmm. Which format? The random documents the... and audio logs. Ah, uh, uh, yes. You know, like, we'll, we'll write the whole background, and then we'll just chop it up into pieces and scatter it around the environment, and the player will search through and find them. Um, and they did that with the memories, but I think what worked is that there were only 12 of them. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, locations were actually laid out pretty simply. Uh... And it told a single cohesive narrative rather than, like, just a bunch of random little half snippets of interesting world-building facts somebody thought up. Which I guess is, I guess they hid that in the um, Hyrule Compendium notes. Because <laughs> mm, yeah. we didn't take a picture of anything. It's got fun facts. Anyway. <laughs> hmm. This does make me want to go back and, and watch all the cutscenes for Age of Calamity. Because even though it is written... Far less well than uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, the characters are kind of the most obvious versions of themselves, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. There's really none of the subtlety that's in Breath of the Wild. Um, it is cool to A, see a point in time when everything was okay, uh, <laughs> uh, and then B, see more of the Zelda Link dynamic, even if, again, it is a, a an unsubtle version of, of what we have implied through Breath of the Wild. Um, it is it is genuinely very heartwarming to actually like be able to see the moment where like Zelda's love for Link activates her powers and then it works. Yeah. And then everyone is actually mm -hmm. okay because true love does in fact save the day in that story. I, yeah. I just I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean I my beef with Age of Calamity's existence has very little to do with the the, the good parts of the writing in it. Um but I do think that <clears throat> one of the things that Breath of the Wild practices is the art of restraint in that it does not chain together everything. Like, none of the memories are exactly congruous with each other. Um, they, no, none of them pick up where another one left off exactly. So you end the game with, like, a bunch of snippets of what happened, but you still don't know mm -hmm. the full story. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of benefit to that style of writing where you, you imply things that have happened without having to say in so many words what exactly they were. But... I think when you're the writer, there is also a temptation to tell exactly what happened because that way nobody will get it wrong. Um, <laughs> and there, this is on my mind. I was recently rewatching um, the H Bomber Guy video, Sherlock is Garbage and Here's Why, because I mm. find it cathartic to like watch that every six months. Um, and he has this discussion in it about how Stephen Moffat, as a writer, really likes implying interesting things that happened in the past. Um, but when he has to actually write a full plot of something where he has to explain what those interesting things were, it just kind of goes off the rails um, because he really likes explaining those things, even though that kind of ruins the impact of the, the subtle implication in the first place. Um, and it feels like that's almost what happened when they, when they went from Breath of the Wild to Age of Calamity because they were like, Breath of the Wild, great. We've got, we've got little hints of who these champions were in life. And now in the deal, in the, in the whatever the fuck Hyrule Warriors is, um, reskin of a completely unrelated game, you'll be able to see the champions living and thriving as the most flanderized, oversaturated versions of their personalities we could get. <laughs> and it's like, eh, it's, it's, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a valid criticism. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played the damn thing, so this is all just me, you know, talking out of my sass, but whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I like this game. <laughs> It's I'm a good excited game. for Tears of the Kingdom. Ah! Oh, man. There was a... Uh, what was it? One week. One Just week. barely more than one week. One week. Uh, <laughs> there, what video I watched? Um, yeah, Age of Calamity is very fan service -y. That's That's pretty much exactly it. I remember. It was Inside Games. Uh, they just had a video come out like yesterday that was like, 
Tears of the Kingdom performs terribly, and I was like, oh no! And I started watching the video, and they're like, everyone says Tears of the Kingdom is awesome, but sometimes the frame rate slows down. And I was like, okay, guys. <laughs> I, I like and respect your journalism, but please don't scare me like that. Yeah. Um, chat would like to know if we plan on stream streaming Tears of the Kingdom. I imagine not immediately. But... Uh, actually, we, we were talking about this yesterday. Um, oh. So we have this habit of doing like a really big charity stream in the summer where we get like oh, yeah. as many of our friends as we can call up and they all just like cycle in and out as one of us streams for a ludicrously long period of time, which, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> not to brag, but I've sort of uh, worked up the stamina for at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, it used to be like, oh, we're going to stream for eight hours. Oh, God, what a trial on the red, just like oh, hey, amateurs. Let <laughs> Red do it and then it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just let me carry yeah, we and have... we'll be fine. Um, so, so we the, discussed I, doing that as the Tears of the Kingdom one. I, I'm remembering this conversation now. Let's yeah. Back to so, so the idea is that basically I'm going to hold off on streaming any Tears of the Kingdom until we do that, just because, you know, it kind of makes it a little bit more exciting, don't you think? Uh, and also, also yeah, for I mean, the sake of being able to get our own playthroughs in, yeah. so we're not like getting led around by by uh, eager uh, people in chat when we don't even know what we're like looking at. Yeah, um, exactly. It gives us time to experience it fresh first, and uh, I think that'll be probably the best way to do it. Because mm -hmm. that also means we won't be spoiling it for people who yeah. didn't yeah. necessarily pre-order it or get it super early. So, so the rest of May is probably going to be a little bit chiller on the streams department. Because uh, I've been having a lot of fun doing this, but also I think... I think this is the right amount of game streaming for any given time. I don't think we need to immediately yeah. pile into something no, this, else. This was a great, like, seven or eight stream series. Playing Tears of the Kingdom, and then you'll just see Red tweeting about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep things spoiler-free for, like, the first... Just, like, two. vague posting a set of coordinates on the map and five exclamation points. <laughs> oh, that's genius. I'm definitely doing that. Um, but, yeah, so the idea is that when we do, uh, when we do the summer big charity bonanza, whatever. Uh, I'm basically <clears throat> probably just going to start a fresh file of Tears of the Kingdom, and we're all just going to have a funky, fresh, good time with it. Um, yeah. 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 It'll be fun. We'll chat with some friends who probably also have played the game, all that good stuff. Uh, as soon as I uh, asked this question, I remembered exactly the conversation that we had. Ain't <laughs> 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 oh, that boy. how it goes. Yeah. So. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I think... This was great. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is probably a, a good, chill place to wrap this bad boy up. So, uh... Hope everybody. Oh gosh, eleven has. streams. My bad. I, I got it wrong. I guess seven or eight. We're we're, we're on eleven. Damn. Sorry. I'm interrupted. considering yeah. the possibility. It might be a good idea to to make a little playlist for them. Just now that this mm -hmm. now that it's done and there's like a decent number of them, mm -hmm. if people want to watch through them all. Um, maybe I can go through and add little numbers to the thumbnails. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this was uh this was really fun. I uh, hope people had a good time. Uh, this game is always a, a joy for me to revisit, and uh, revisiting it with company was extra fun. There was a lot of stuff I found yeah. in this playthrough that I've never done before. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will, uh, I mean, obviously we'll see you on Friday in the next regular video, which I yeah. well, I think this is a good one, actually. I think this is a really fun one. <laughs> I mean, they're all Oh, good. it is. I, I try to make them all good ones, but I think this one's an extra fun one. Uh, I'm excited for this one. Yes. Anyway, so yeah, I guess we patrons will. Patrons know what's up. Yeah, patrons know what's up. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. It went out to, like, yesterday. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in and donating to the Extremely Worthy Cause of the ACLU. If you're watching this uh, in the mm -hmm. VOD, the uh, fundraiser will probably still be up for like two more weeks from yep. the point of upload. Two yeah, weeks. so always a good time to donate. Um, if we do improvise some other like wacky game or After Dark stream, we can carry over whatever goal <laughs> we assign for uh, for fundraising. Anyway, this was fun. I think I need to sleep a little bit more uh <laughs> yeah do that but yes uh all yeah, right well we need to go buy double a battery ah uh, like yes the double a battery saga we were discussing before the stream um My anyway keyboard is at zero energy ah! i like to oh. type things well so uh far be it for me to keep you from your quest so thank you all so much for tuning in and i will see you guys later all right bye, bye everybody bye.